is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Hello, boys. Well, let's get back to it. Just stop oil protesters have been accused of criminal damage and may go to jail. Fossil fuel magnates have not been accused of criminal damage and will not go to jail. They will go to the House of Lords. Extreme weather continues to ravage parts of southern Europe with an excessive heat warning in place in Greece. A flood hit Mallorca. Deadly wildfires are ripping through Turkish villages. And Italy is experiencing a heat wave combined with dry conditions that are the ideal circumstances for wildfires in areas like Sardinia and Sicily. Wherever they are. Scientists say climate change is set to fuel more fires and other disasters unless measures are taken to tackle the problem. But as these are just experts in possession of facts, no one is remotely interested in anything they have to say. Correct. It's just weather, say people who know nothing but are weirdly angry that anyone should suggest that the vast amount of pollution we pump out as a species could have any effect on the planet that we live on. Seems like common sense to me. But there's nothing common about it. Meanwhile, in this country, a heat wave is set to scorch the UK next week with temperatures set to reach nearly 29 degrees centigrade within the next few days. And it's all thanks to global warming. Thank you. After an absolutely abysmal spring and summer so far, temperatures are set to be cranked up as hot weather travelling across Europe reaches these shores. What? Wait a minute. Hot weather travelling across Europe, we're going to be breathing second-hand European air. Air that's been in and out of a French person. Disgusting. Met Office a forecaster Neil said fine conditions will return by Sunday and into next week. For much of the UK, this will be accompanied by a boost in temperatures with many places reaching the mid-20 degrees centigrade in the middle of next week. Not everywhere, though. I bet there'll be somewhere in the northwest, for instance, that will be uh, somewhat worse than that. I can check on that while you wait, but uh, don't really see the point. Aha! <sighs> uh -huh. Well, <laughs> in a change to your normal schedule, it, it might be raining at the moment. Please don't call me from Glasgow and tell me that it isn't, because it is. It will not, however, be raining on uh, Saturday or Sunday or Monday. Can you believe that? No. It will, though, be raining on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday and... Oh, what? Not raining on Monday the 1st of July. Pfft, rubbish. Uh, Tuesday, normal services resumed and it will continue to rain every day for the rest of your lives. Oh, well, never mind. So, no heat wave in Glasgow, but, you know, Glaswegians wouldn't have anything to wear in a heat wave, so that's probably for the best. And what is a heat wave when it is at home, I hear you ask? Well, fact fans, a heat wave is a prolonged period of abnormally high temperatures relative to the expected conditions at that given time and lasting for three or more consecutive days. And we are about to have a heat wave. Can you believe that? No. The mail says the warmer weather will likely see large numbers of people head to the UK's coastal areas to make the most of the conditions. Warning, warning. For those, <laughs> for those looking to take a dip into the sea to cool off in the heat, the Royal National Lifeboat Institute... You know the Royal National Lifeboat Institute, don't you? Boo! <laughs> yeah, that's him. That's them, yeah. Uh, they warned about the risk of cold water shock and being safe in open water. That's what they warned you about. The cold. Plus, there's the poop issue. Which sounds like an edition of the Water Industries magazine. The poop issue. But it's worse than that. Do not go into the sea without a hazmat suit and an ambulance on standby. That's just good advice, isn't it? Yes. Samantha Hughes, National Water Safety Partner at the Royal National Lifeboat Institute, said, If you're planning on heading to the beach, we highly recommend you visit one that is lifeguarded and you swim between the red and the yellow flags. This is the safest area and is most closely monitored by lifeguards. No, Samantha Hughes, National Water Safety Partner at the Royal National Lifeboat Institute. The safety area is not to swim between the red and the yellow flags, most closely monitored by lifeguards. The safest area is in the bar on the seafront with a road between you and the water. Booze. 
Would you like to hear the long-range forecast for the next four weeks? Yes. Actually, now it's got better? Yes, I would like to hear that. OK, first, um, it's the last week in June and the first week in July. Oh, blimey, it's almost July already. We've, we've gone past the longest day. It's practically Jesus' birthday. Last week in June, first week in July. Fine and settled at first. And much warmer than in recent weeks, but not in the northwest, though. Never in the northwest. Then, after a brief spell of what you could call summer, it's back to showers or longer periods of rain and potentially thunder, lightning, very, very frightening. Rock and roll! And then the middle two weeks in July. <sighs> Some spells of drier, sunnier weather with showers or longer spells of rain, mostly in the north and the west. Dry in the south and temperatures slightly more likely than normal to be above average. <gasps> Dry in the south and temperatures slightly more likely than normal to be above average? We'll take it! <laughs> so, emails, when I heard the allegations that Tory candidates had placed bets on the date of the general election, I couldn't even be bothered to put myself to the trouble of batting an eyelid. <laughs> She's like, did you did you engage in an eye roll, Sue? How about a tut? Or an expellation of air? Like that. That was pathetic. I mean, talk about weak. It emerged that there was an extraordinary spike in bets on a July election the day before Fishy Sunak announced the news. You know, Fishy Sunak out of... This government. Yeah. You remember that Fishy said that he was looking at an autumn election, and then he suddenly wasn't? Well, analysis of figures from Betfair, the world's largest online betting exchange, showed almost £3,000 was gambled in just a few hours on May the 21st. Oh, fabulous. Three grand. I mean, it's all so pathetically small beer, isn't it? I mean, to have insider knowledge of an event happening and then only betting a hundred quid or so on it, I mean... What's the point? It's not less illegal if you don't bet a lot. So why would you risk everything for what is basically spare change for these people? I mean, those financial finaglers in the city of London bet on insider information all the time. Inside information is the lifeblood of the hedge fund and the banking rackets. They aren't geniuses, they've just got better contacts than we do. And they bet hundreds of millions of pounds. They don't put a hundred quid on some event happening that they've had a tip on. Because what's the point? I mean, it's all so comically stupid. And when he was asked about this on that Question Time show, Fishy Sunak said he is incredibly angry that the gambling watchdog is investigating several senior conservatives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I wonder if he's incredibly angry that the gambling watchdog is investing is investigating several senior conservatives, or he's incredibly angry that several senior conservatives have perhaps done something that is worthy of investigation by the gambling watchdog. Select. And he put on his hurt little puppy dog eyes, and he looked like he was going to burst into tears at one point. <laughs> and the party's director of campaigning, Tony Lee, took a leave of uh, absence uh, yesterday with uh, he and his uh, Tory candidate wife, Laura Saunders, both under investigation. And Mr Sunak's close parliamentary aide, Craig Williams, is also being investigated for betting £100 on the date. The odds are five to one. Earlier this week, one of the PM's police protection officers was arrested over betting claims, and a gambling industry insider told Sky News that there would be more names coming out. And former Tory leader... Sir Ian Middlename Smith branded those involved as stupid and a venal. And Michael Gove said the situation doesn't look great for the Conservatives, adding... A major capital letters, big news story. And Tim Montgomery, founder of grassroots website Conservative Home, said... Conservative members and activists are shell-shocked. <laughs> really? Let's do a straw poll, shall we? Hands up who is shell-shocked at these developments. Now, hands up who isn't? Well, that's overwhelming. The use of confidential information to gain unfair advantage when betting may constitute a criminal offence of cheating under the Section 42 of the Gambling Act. 
Those convicted face an unlimited fine or up to two years in jail. Of course, if they do it on a massive scale, as part of a hedge fund operation, then they will not go to jail. They will instead go to the House of Lords, assuming they donate just enough of their winnings to the right political party. But they'll have to give considerably more than they'd win on a £100 bet on odds of 5 to 1. <laughs> I mean, just pathetic. Speaking of which, the England football team. Affirmative. <laughs> There's uh, about two hours of my life I'm not getting back. I'm not sure I want to watch it anymore. I might just uh, swerve the live games and just watch the uh, the the um, the highlights. Hi <laughs> the highlights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, assuming that there are any. God, that was awful. What is it about England players? who, oh, throughout the course of their uh, season in the Premier League, do excellent work. And then they put on the England shirt, and it's, it, it's almost like the England shirt is made of lead. It just weighs them down. Go on, pass back to the goalkeeper again. I double dare you. Anyway. It's coming home. No, it isn't. Daryl says, we're past summer solstice and the night, nights are drawing in. Oh, come off it. Drawing in? Give us a couple of months before you come out with a phrase like that. And, and oh, it gets worse. Daryl says, we're past summer solstice and the, as the nights, and the nights are drawing in as we head towards another winter. <laughs> Never mind, there's always summer 2025. P.S. Good luck with the callers tonight. It's a full moon. Oh, no. Is it? That seems to come around every month. What's that? Somebody should definitely look into that. 0345 6060 973. Uh, Windsor, Zach. Hi, Nick. Yes. You there? Yes, I'm, the, I'm here. Are you there? Yes, I am. Oh, it's so great to talk to you, mate. Uh, okay. That's super. What would you like to say? So, uh, I just wanted to talk about... So, firstly, I was just reading your book, actually. A bit late to the game, of course. Which but, one? Um, the uh, A to Z of 2023. <laughs> right. Um, Keep, keeping up with all the latest very, news. Yes. Yes, latest, of course. Um, honestly, this election campaign is just... Oh, uh, it's just going on and on and on. Boring! Oh, I know. Just, I know. just imagine I know. what it must be like for Americans, though, because their election <laughs> campaign goes on for years. I mean, literally years it goes on for. I know, and, uh, well, uh, say, uh, if Joe Biden doesn't, of course, uh, pass away during this campaign, but... Um, well, <laughs> uh, I don't think the campaign will stop if Joe Biden passes away. I don't, I don't think yeah, uh, Donald yeah. Trump will be immediately elected the president, even if he can be more presidential than anybody. I can be more presidential than anybody. Than well, anybody. Yes. Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, well, so, did you register oh, to vote? He... Zach, did you register to vote? Um, no, I'm actually 14. You're 14 so, years old. That's no excuse. You could have registered any... You could have voted a couple yeah. of times. Three, maybe, tops. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I have actually registered to vote, Nick. Excellent. Yeah. All right, well, make, um, make sure you do it on the day, all right? Yeah. I'll do it at least at least three times. Promise me you'll do that. Yes, I will. Okay. Thank you much. All right, thanks, thanks a lot, mate. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. What we got here... Is a failure to communicate. Yeah, mostly it's a failure to communicate. Uh, Mina says, uh, Bonsoir, Monsieur Abbott. Weather is still... Uh... Yeah, it's not bad. It almost feels like summer outside. Tristan says, They say money doesn't bring you happiness, in relation to what I was uh, saying just before the uh, new news. He says, I've never seen anyone miserable on a jet ski. <laughs> you can hire a jet ski for 150 quid a day. I just looked it up. What are you talking about? And I couldn't think of anything more boring than being on a jet ski. But because, first of all, it must be incredibly uncomfortable. If you go fast on open water, it's deeply uncomfortable. Probably about the most uncomfortable uh, method of travelling that's ever been invented. And second, where are you going to go? I mean, you go out a bit, uh, and then what? You can't really go anywhere. You just go around and around. It's just so dull. 
Kent. Hello, Tony. Hi, Nicky. Okay. No, I mean, hi, Nick. Right, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think you. Yes, I think you can read my mind a little bit because I um because I, I listen to this show because it's very informative. It definitely is. Yeah. And um, you, I want to talk about what I'm going to talk about. I always do this anyway. Yeah, you mentioned the euros. I was going to ask you, are you enjoying the euros? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Me neither. Why does this always happen? Like, you know, um, we get as, a, as if like the British government isn't already causing us enough stress. Like we have tournament after tournament after tournament, and it always gets to the first game. You know, we went. Um, I've, got, I've got to be honest with you about something in a minute. Um, we had we went one new up at so everyone's going, yeah, it's all good, and then you just see the same thing happen again. And it was on Sunday, and I knew you was coming up at ten o'clock. I didn't even watch the second half. Um, for the Serbia game. Yeah. I managed to stay awake yesterday for the whole game at 7pm. Can you believe that? Um, but uh, why does it always happen? And Southgate, I've never been a fan of him anyway. He's very defensive. We need someone else up the top, I think. Like, well, we we're going to get somebody. Well, we'll get somebody, uh, you know, after this uh, tournament. I reckon it's Arsene Wenger. Uh, I saw him with David Dean. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no chance. <laughs> No, Arsene well, Wenger? No, I don't think so. No, 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 I'd like it to be. Or Eddie Howe, anyway. Yes, so... He, yeah, he would be good, but I don't think he would take the poison chalice that is um, no. the England but manager's you know, job. Yeah. I don't know, what is it What is it that comes over a player um, who is n normally excellent, day, like week in, week out, and then they put on an England shirt and they just become a chump. I could have played better than most of the players on the uh, pitch. That, well, all right, <laughs> maybe not, but in my dreams yeah, I, I could have been. Mean. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it's like when, um, you know, I remember, you know, when Roy Hodgson got um, the... And then I remember there was a big um, hoo-ha. I don't want to talk too much about football, but big hoo-ha about Harry Redknapp was in the in the frame. And I liked him. Everyone was thinking, Harry Redknapp, yeah, you know. And then they chose Roy Hodgson. Come on! <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Right. Anyway, God, oh... Yeah, the stress, it's unbelievable. But so, you know, like British government, with stress. It gets to the third game, we're going to be all in ten to hooks again, and uh, literally, we might just scrape through. But yeah, anyway, I I'm, really I'm, like I'm, 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 I just don't think I'm going to watch the next match live. I, I, I just, you know, there's other things to do, like staring out the window mm. would have been better uh, <laughs> use of my time. Tony, I've got to go, unless there's something important uh, that is... Uh, yes, yes, yes. Go on, then. Right, now, on the news in the week, um, economic growth... Uh, right, so if anyone's considering not voting Labour... And, uh, you know, all these people who keep saying, um, oh, we don't know what to vote for, you know, I'm, I'm really, uh, you know... Yeah, I they're you know, all, all the them, same, people. they say. Yes, yeah. yes. Now, from 1995 to 2008, so you had um, John Major for five, good old Tony, Tony Blair, uh, for ten years, economic growth, for GDP per person, was 49.6%. From wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. F what is 49.6% mm. of, of what? What do you mean? Well, economic growth for GDP. So what each person is, you know... Oh, uh, between uh, the uh, years uh, of... Uh, 95 to 2008. OK. People's um, wages this per head population. Yeah, yeah. Right. Now, is this, uh, yeah. in, is, is this taking into now, account inflation, or is, is, in, oh, is it in real now, terms? You're, now, you're just confused. I don't, I don't <laughs> understand about all that. The, now, from 2008 <laughs> to 2024, yes. this sham of a year, and then we can go last year and the mm -hmm. year before that and the year before that, Economic growth, you know, per person for the GDP, 4.3%. Right. Now, yeah, that's just... Yeah, uh, exactly. Four, 40 so, some percent is a larger num number than uh, four some percent. I, I think that that is uh, accurate. Oh, yeah. that's massively accurate, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> I, I was shocked. So I think I be, anyone I confused... You, I bet you weren't. Oh, yeah. oh, I was shocked because... No, I was shocked by how low it was. Yeah, I, I, I bet you weren't. <laughs> All right, listen, Tony, um, I want you to keep me updated with uh, any further statistics that become available to you. All right, because no, noise and numbers, that's what this show's about. And one, two, um, yeah, uh, two, three, um, six million. No, no. Andrew says, rest in peace, Donald Sutherland. He uh, starred with Gene Wilder, Billy Whitelaw and Victor Spinetti in the 1969 uh, film Start the Revolution Without Me, which is one of the funniest uh, films I have ever seen. I saw it at the cinema, but sadly it's never been shown on UK terrestrial TV. Huh. Well, why is that then? I had to go and pay for It's a Mad, 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 Mad World um, over the uh, Christmas period because that hadn't been uh, shown for as long as I can remember either. And that, that is hilarious, that film. And yet we've got no end of rubbish.
God, if, I, if another spider blooming man film comes on TV, I am going to scream. <coughs> Chris says, if Sunak is referring him to himself as OG, does that mean <laughs> oversized gnome? <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. Martin says, I don't like comedy clubs as I take no pleasure from watching an unfunny, struggling stand-up comedian on uh, dying on stage. Having said that, I get uh, pleasure from watching the Prime Minister and Penny Hairspray squirming live on TV. The pleasure I get is immeasurable. I can't get enough of it, says Martin. I tell you what, I am looking forward to the, uh, the 5th of July so much. I can't wait. I already have um, my, uh, my plan, my plan of action. I'm not going to stay up uh, all night. I'm going to set the recording from about 3 a.m., then wake up the next day and watch it as live. Because why ruin your health for, um, uh, uh, for some strung-out pleasure? Because the results aren't, aren't all going to come at once, and so if you start watching it first thing in the morning, then you can zip through the bits that are all them, uh, you know, just to natter in a way. And then um, you can stop and slow mo the part when um, s uh, when smoke's on screen, for instance. I don't know anything. <laughs> it can't come fast enough. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three East Yorkshire. Hello, Mike. Hi, Nick. He's sounding very chipper this week. Um, uh, okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, a um, couple of quickies before I get on to the main point. Yes. Jet speed. Do you not remember during COVID when that bloke got arrested for jet skiing from the mainland to the Isle of Man to his girlfriend? <laughs> Vaguely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he's been talking about gambling. The but gambling hang on, though. Bird. Hang on, hang on, though. The, the, the actual trip, I bet, wasn't pleasurable. He, he may have had pleasure when he got there. Disgusting. But not on the trip itself. No, one of my ex bosses was an international jet skier, and I got a girl, and only once. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. And oh, okay. seriously, yeah, because even a even a flat expanse of water isn't flat, and all of those ridges, you feel every single one of them. Like, like if you go on a speedboat, even on a lake, it's so desperately uncomfortable. It's, it, has, it is the worst form of travel ever invented. Yeah, I quite agree with you on that one. Yeah, and anyway, going on, you were mentioning gambling earlier on. Yeah. Well, the gambling authorities ought to be. Um, having a look at fishy because he reneged on a thousand pound bet to charity <laughs> they're not very good at betting in real life this lot, are they maybe good on the spreadsheet but he is abysmal <laughs> at this job i mean he really is i mean if i were him i would have made a big uh, deal about uh, handing over the money in cash not a bank transfer nothing as soulless as that we want cash money i mean maybe a, a, a barrel full a barrel a wheelbarrow full of pound coins you know something like that yeah, yeah, he could have made something out of it and didn't. It but, didn't, um, yeah. But the main point I rang us about, I mean, I was so annoyed today. I thought we'd plumbed the depths of depravity with political leaders with Johnson, and I thought it can only be on the way up from here. Mm -hmm. And then today, Nigel Farage <laughs> endorsed Andrew Tate. Yes, yes, I mean, he did. How, how bad can it get? What sort of lunatics do this? An important voice to be heard, or, or, or words to that effect, he said. I'm a nutcase. What is he talking about? I mean, it's... And then, and then, and then he goes people... spouting um, Russian uh, propaganda talking points. I mean, it's just beyond belief. And earlier in the week, one of his candidates virtually endorsed Hitler by saying <laughs> we should have accepted a, a pact with Hitler as yeah. though Hitler was OK. Mm. Ni mean, nice people on both sides, the Second World War. <laughs> that's what I heard. But, but they must have actually sort of um, done some th put some thought into this because <laughs> by saying that about Andrew Tate, who, which voters that he's already got is he going to lose? Probably none. But is he going to tap into the eighteen to twenty five year old man <laughs> and get two or three percent of them? It will be done on purpose because it's all cynical. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, I I'm I'm looking forward to. I'm, with trepidation, I'm looking forward to um, when uh, that the, the result in Clacton is announced uh, as well. I, I want to see certain faces fall, that's for sure. It might have got to go, but thanks for that. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. I am not one of your fans! Ahmed emails, my friend who lives in Glasgow said it has not rained there for three days in a row. Can you confirm if this is true? 
as it seems like he's telling porkies to me. Yeah, me too. Liar! I mean, I'm just assuming that he's lying. Emma says, not only is it a full moon, it's a strawberry moon. I just had a wowzers moment and uh, included a picture of a bright red moon. Blimey. That is a bright orange moon. Have you ever seen a moon that orange? I haven't. I think it's Filton, though. Really? I, I don't know. Oh, it's fake news. Boo, Emma. Boo! <laughs> Assuming that it is. I don't know. That could be uh, real because I think we've got... Um, don't we have Saharan dust coming over here? Because that's the sort of thing that will turn that moon orange. And uh, Zara says, how is it your 14-year-old callers talk more sense than your old callers? I'm not being ageist, of course, just saying, says Zara, who is being ageist. <coughs> but you are completely correct in every respect there, uh, Zara. The uh, old geezers, if, if you put your ear to their head, this is the sound you'll hear. <coughs> 0345 Penge. Peter. Hi, mate, how are you doing? Yes, good, thanks. Um, I, I just, just one little thing. Poor old uh, Mike in East York, she's still, still being shocked by what the Conservatives are doing. <laughs> you know, I don't yeah. think any shocked anymore. I know. <laughs> Wake up. Yeah. It's later than you think. <laughs> but what I did ring up for, and it was, um, you know, angry. He's, he's very angry. Um, Richard, very angry. Oh, didn't, right. Didn't, well, but is this not a standard letter? in the Conservatives, because I think Boris's words were word for word. I'm very angry. Oh, yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's very, <laughs> very angry, and, and no rules have been broken. Read my lips. Yeah. Yeah. And if he does find out about any rules, I'm sure it was near enough word for word, you know? I was just standing there <laughs> thinking, that could be Boris saying that. I'm very angry. I'm very, very angry, <laughs> and he followed the rules at all times. I followed the ministerial guidance 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 at all times. He followed the ministerial guidance at all times. Well, if he, if he said it, then... Uh, he it must be true, yeah. yeah. But the plan's catching a bit, isn't it? You can Keir Starmer oh. got a plan. You know, the plan is now... I wish he would tell it. us what this plan is, rather than just uh, boasting about the results of his plan. We have a plan. Plan, 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 plan. And the plan is working. It's all embarrassing, isn't it? Really. <laughs> yes. it's, it's, it's yeah, it? it is. Yeah, and if the England football team had uh, done particularly well, or, or just even <laughs> averagely well, then it, it would have taken the eye off the rest of the embarrassment that is this uh, once great nation. But and unfortunately, the saying the icing on the cake. <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the uh, the cherry on the top with cream all over it. Thanks a lot, Peter. O three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Rebecca says, I sent my postal vote yesterday. Vote out to help out was my number one priority. It's the country's number one priority. It's my number one priority up and down the country, and that will be our focus. Your number one priority should be to vote. And guess what? If you haven't registered yet, it's too late. Oh, no. Yes. You get nothing. You lose. I bet there's loads of people who haven't uh, done it. And in fact, um, I have detailed files on that. One moment, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll find them in a while. Yeah, there was this um, uh, study uh, a while ago that said um, something that I can't remember. That's interesting, <laughs> isn't it? No. <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember exactly what it said, but the uh, number of people that had not registered to vote was absolutely astronomical. You wouldn't believe it. Huge. And the younger you are, the less likely you are to have registered to vote. Typical. Kids, eh? Uh, let's see now. Merthyr Tidfil. Hello, Jeff. Well, Nick, how are you? I am great, mate. Um, uh, I, I've been through it. Terrible, surreal experience. Oh, yeah. I went to Hustings. Hust Hustings? Mm -hmm. Hustings for, you know, where all the candidates line yeah. up and, and they're asked questions. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've had to spend the day in the Goose and Cuckoo to recover my soul. Oh, yeah. It was so... Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, I'd gone there to sort of have a go at the reform candidate. And um, he turned up uh, in a wheelchair, and the others in 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 the in the row 
were asked various questions. And every time they were asked about Gaza, they brought up Ukraine and how the, well, this was the communist candidate and a couple of others, how, how NATO had allowed Putin the excuse to invade Ukraine. We're talking about Gaza. Right. One was asked, should we leave the economic court, uh, the European Court of Human Rights? Mm-hmm. And he said, well, what do you mean? Uh, one, one candidate said, what do you mean, European? It, it's something to do with Europe, is it? Um, <laughs> and, and, no, no, this is true. This is true. And he said, and, and I quote, mm-hmm. well, if it's Europe, we don't want anything to do with it. Yeah. Because Europe was totally destroyed, you know, jobs and everything else. Oh, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah. we, we H- reached... Holding us, holding us back, they were. Yeah. yeah. So the whole thing turned into some sort of surreal event, which I couldn't quite grasp because the reform candidate agreed with everything. He agreed with PR. The only person that didn't agree with PR was the sitting MP. Right, yeah, ain't, ain't that always the way, though? No, <laughs> yeah. no one is going to vote for something that uh, enabled them to get to the elevated it, position that they enjoy. Exactly. So the end result was that the Reform Party candidate, who a great, you know, he, he wanted to stress the fact that he was his own man, mm-hmm. didn't show any of these traits of Nigel Farage, but was, in fact, more left than you'd ever think, right? So what the point I want to make you is don't assume that every reform candidate Thinks is alike. a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, isn't that the case? Right. What I want to say is that there are... <laughs> It's surreal. It was surreal. I, I have to recover from it today. And I, I and I when it was over in the Goose and Cougar, I did notice they've got a tremendous folk festival coming up on July the 13th. Oh, folk go. music. And, no thanks. And, and, <laughs> it, it, no, it's, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Right. Okay. It's a big no from me. And furthermore... No, 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 no. No thanks. But I appreciate the offer. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. 0345 6060 973. Uh, God emails, Nick, I have invented a wind machine that is designed to blow away the air and replace it with new air. Well, that sounds great. Craig emails, I'm compiling a list of all the things that have got better over the last 14 years out of the Conservatives. It'll be ready for your show on the 5th of, Ju- <laughs> 5th of July. <laughs> He'll have found one by the 5th of July. I'm looking forward to that. Adam says, can you explain how I would know if I'm on the left of the right? Now, does that mean... that is that a misspelling of, of the word or? How would I know if I'm on the left or the right is a different question to how would I know if I'm on the left of the right? You're going to have to be more specific, Adam. And Adrian says, England playing football... B-O-R-E is amazing. I virtually get the supermarket to myself. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere was everywhere was empty. Empty. And the, the place had emptied out for the pre-match uh, build-up as well, which I uh, skipped because, uh, you know, I can only take so much punishment. Uh, but for the match itself, I, I did uh, sit... I was sat sitting there expecting uh, something better with each passing minute and uh, was uh, cruelly disappointed. How can we be so bad and have so much talent in our team? How? How How can they fashion that? Tell me, please. I am begging you. Are they just tired? I mean, I can understand that they'd be tired. I mean, super fit athletes and all. They, you can't just run them like, uh, like tractors, like a Ferrari. You can't run a Ferrari like you would a tractor. Got to give it a bit of a rest and, uh, you know, oil it every now and again. <laughs> so maybe they're just tired. But I would have thought that, uh, you know, putting the England shirt on would revivify even the most exhausted player. But apparently not. And also, they just seem to forget how to play football. Or they certainly seem to forget how to play, how they play the football that they ordinarily entertain us with week after week after week. It's mystifying. Can it possibly be that the manager is telling them to play that boringly? 
No, don't go forwards. Just keep passing side to side and in um, an emergency, go backwards and brought all the way back to the goalkeeper. And then he'll... <laughs> and then he'll... Uh, there'll be an explosion of sh furious shouting from him. And then the process will um, repeat itself. God, it's so tedious. Al texts, the parties are all the same. Oh, no. Come on, Al. The parties are all the same. I can't believe that people are still saying this. Oh, there is one... I should read on. There is one exception. Reform UK. Don't get me wrong, says Al. I disagree with almost everything they stand for, except perhaps the House of Lords and the voting system reform. They are, however, the only party actually using a bus as a battle bus rather than a coach. Good on Nigel for saying it as it is. Buses are buses, not coaches. Well, that's just true. <laughs> is he actually travelling on it, though? Or does he get on the coach for a photo op and then get off the coach and go and they get uh, driven here and there in a luxury limousine? Oh, I can only dream of travelling in a luxury limousine. Wouldn't that be marvellous? Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. You don't know what you're talking about, do you? No, no, I don't. 0345 6060 973. Here is the person that sent us that uh, fake picture of the moon in Ipswich. It's Emma. Hello, Emma. That is absolutely scandalous. <laughs> oh, I squealed. Oh, you're scandalous. <laughs> Why are you sending us fake pictures of the moon, Emma? It's not fake news. There's no fake news. There's no fake news. Oh, I tell you, I told him off. I slapped his legs. I said, no, it's not. I am standing in the middle of a meadow. <laughs> In the middle of a meadow? Well, that sounds a delight. Yes, I know. It does sound like a delight, but in the meantime, hmm. please tell your glamorous assistant that since he's accused me of sending a fake picture, the two of my dogs have rolled in fox poo, and I think he needs to come and clean them. <laughs> but honestly, yeah, I yeah I'll, I'll pass on that message. I, I can't guarantee he'll be there within the hour, but I just stand exactly where you are, Emma, and wait till his arrival. Oh, no. I will. Honestly, I swear to you, I because I always know about the strawberry moons, and I haven't seen one like that for five years. Well, I it's mean, very. I, it, I think it, it's a very remarkable well, color. It's a, it was orange, and so, somebody has texted in. Yeah. Um, Michael says the moon was orange from the sun, which is almost certainly not <laughs> correct. That's how the. <laughs> yeah, I did really well to swallow those words. Did you see that? You're an idiot, Michael, and I mean that in the nicest yeah. and most uh, supportive way possible. In the nicest way. Honestly, I, I went up. I would have thought I'd had quite a few rounds at the Goose and Cuckoo, yeah. but I hadn't. No. I went up. I turned. I was like, it was. I And the trouble is, there are so many times I do my everyday life, and I have, I have your soundboard in my ears. Oh, yeah. And that was a wowzers. Mm -hmm. That was a wow. That was a wowzers. That was a yeah. wowzers. That was a Yeah, one, one well, that was a that. Yeah. That was a that. So I had to send it. Can I just quickly say, though, I'm still in... I'm obsessed with rage. How dare he say? <laughs> so, anyway, I will call. She, she's fit to scream. <laughs> Go ahead and let it out, Emma. Even if you are, um, you know, in the middle of a... There, there aren't any cows in yeah. the middle of that field, are there? Oh, no. Because no, they, they are no. actually very dangerous. I mean, they won't eat you or anything, but they might... If you if they l l lay on you, you'd know about it. They, they are. I was chased into a stream by a herd once. <laughs> they are... They, <laughs> my life. Okay, I'm going to rethink how much information I'm giving over on the radio yeah, right uh, now. I think you'd better think it out again. All right, thanks a lot, Emma. 0345 6060 973. Mike says, I've just seen the moon is orange. More lunacy, lunar C from the Just Stop Oil campaigners. <laughs> yeah, I mean, can you talk about a life out of balance? Talk about a twisted way of living. The people that are trying to draw attention, our attention to the destruction of all that we hold dear, they may go to jail. The people that are actually causing the destruction of all that we hold dear, they, they are going to go to the bank and cash checks for billions of pounds. <laughs> the whole world's got insane. 
Let's have, uh, let me see now, who's been waiting the longest? I'll be totally fair about this. It's uh, a Berry, Berry St. Edmunds, Lena. Lena, 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 Lena. Nick, Nick, Nick. Listen, I'm referencing the caller who said that you never see anybody um, looking glum on a jet ski. Yeah. Had he witnessed my face before I crashed into the rock and totally totaled the jet ski? And when he would have seen my face when I was charged three and a half thousand (sighs) dollars to replace it. Blimey. Um, he would have seen a not happy person. And incidentally, this happened in Bermuda, right, which Mm -hmm. is the reinsurance and insurance capital of the world. And the boat that we had hired, who who had the jet ski on it, doesn't have any insurance. Because apparently people in Bermuda don't bother because my son's in the industry. And he said, well, mum, we'd be rather stupid because we hire... Harvard educated Wall Street lawyers to underwrite our policies so we all know we're never getting paid out. <laughs> oh, it's like, hmm. And, okay. and what, is, uh, what is it like on a jet ski? Because I, I haven't uh, been, but I have been in a fast uh, speedboat and I know that I never want to do that again. Well, no, it, it actually is very boring. Yeah. Um, it re- really, that was my first and last time, obviously. They, they wouldn't let me near one again anyway. <laughs> but it was really boring. Uh, and listen, I want to tell you as well mm-hmm. that Glasgow's weather is, is scheduled to rain, 45% chance of rain, from tw- 2,300 hours tonight. Yes, that's so right. It, I did look at that. If it's not raining it, in Glasgow at the moment, then hang on. It yeah, will be soon. Uh, and it's absolutely fake news that it doesn't rain in Glasgow. It rains all the time. All the it time. It just rains all the time, all, all the, the time. time. And yeah. it's not. And it's not. It's not even warm even in the summer. And one other thing, just very, very quickly. And finally, I am yes. About to, um, I think, eat off um, my own arm. I am so bored already with this election, and it's. Um, <laughs> I, I, I can't. It's, it's either that or buy a chainsaw and just, you know, like... Um, no, do don't do it, Lena. It ain't don't worth it. It'll be over before you know it. Just um, take take a couple of Valium and you'll get through it no problem at all. And if, if, you, don't have, if you don't have any Valium, then go to your uh, bathroom cabinet and just, I don't know, have, have a couple of green ones. Or if you haven't got any green ones, then try one of them purple pills. They're great. <laughs> no, no, med- medication cannot make this stop. There's two more weeks of it. Right. Yeah, that is a good it's point. Like, yeah. And it's like, no, stop it now. I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> well, you're going to have to, Lena. There's no other way of uh, getting through it but to get through it. But like I said, just imagine what it must be like for Americans. I mean, their uh, election is in full swing, uh, just as much as ours is. They've got TV debates. I think they're they're coming right up, aren't they? And it's not till November they get to vote. And it's been going like this for at least a year. They are on permanent campaign mode in America. It just never stops. The new president... um, Whoever it might be. A president! <laughs> Can you believe it? No, Donnie, we're still stunned. Whoever it might be, um, they get about six months, put their knees under the table, and then they're in campaign mode for uh, the next uh, four years or so. It's excruciating. I mean, at least uh, at least Fishy did us the favour of not stringing this out till uh, the winter, because he could have done that. So we appreciate it, Fishy. Thank you! It's the only thing we appreciate so far. The, the speed of um, uh, of calling the election, yeah. Thank, thanks very much. Thanks, Lena. O three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Let's see now. Uh, Woolwich, Richard. Woolwich. Yes, sir. Nick. Hi. Hello. Good evening, Nick. Richard. Nick, but just quickly, if it's if the moon is orange, why is yeah. it called a strawberry moon? Because people pick strawberries around this time. Oh, I see. They do it at <laughs> night, and it illuminates the field so that you can pick strawberries at night with, uh, you know, with the, with the light of the moon. Oh, okay. Well, okay. That's so. I, so I, I'll scrub that off. Asking yeah. um, that question off to your, uh, the, to find uh, out the, list. Yes. Yeah. Whatever. But Nick, what I wanted to say is um, um, credit where credit is due. 
the Tories got it absolutely right. Johnson, Sunak, they are spot on. There is widespread electoral fraud in this country. <laughs> it's just that they didn't kind of put it one step on and realise it's senior members of the Tory party that are actually doing it. I cannot believe how pathetically small this scandal is. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. A hundred pounds, supposedly, was bet on insider information. They, uh, at, a, at the odds of five to one, they were going to win 500 quid. They probably make that in a day. It's just, I, I can't believe it. It's pathetic. Yeah, it is pathetic, very pathetic. Um, I think you said earlier, it's kind of a more of an indication of their kind of brainlessness than anything. Yeah. Because if, they, if you're going to do something like that, just get, completely go for it. Exactly. Call, yeah, up, call up your mates at the hedge fund and uh, get them to make a £100 million pound bet and uh, then you can uh, roll around in cash for the rest of your life. Well, that's the other thing. They did it in their own names. I mean, <laughs> how absurd <laughs> is that? I mean, they, do they feel so, you know, that they're, just, they're superheroes that somehow they're untouchable? So detached from the rest of our day-to-day um, -day existence that they do anything they bloomin' well like just as a laugh and get away with it. Well, they, they, they are justified in thinking that to a certain extent, because up to now, people have been getting away with anything they blooming well like, and they don't live in our world, and the, the rules don't apply to them. Eh, Bodge? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we... Exactly. Uh, you know what's weird as well? I read today that they're beginning to realise it's, it's a mistake to run a six-week election, because the York previous call is saying this is bo boring. Mm. And I think it's right, isn't it? Because, I mean, what's, it's all unravelling. I mean, it's a disastrous election for Sunak. And, it, you know, he, he, it's kind of, he's re-empowered um, the Reform Party, and he's even making um, Keir Starmer look impressive. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's absurd. <laughs> i tell you what makes Keir Starmer look impressive. Keir Starmer's new glasses... They're great. He's got, uh, he's got his trust me glasses on. But it didn't really work on TV because if the TV camera is slightly above his head, that means that the top of his glasses cover his eyeballs every now and again, which means that he, he might as well be wearing a mask because you, you can't see him. It becomes a bit uncomfortable to look somebody in the eye if you're looking sort of past and around the frames of their glasses. So I think they, he needs to get those... Um, uh, 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 the, what was that woman's name who was in um, Heidi High? Uh, Sue, Pollard. Sue Pollard. Yeah, he needs yeah. to get some Sue Pollard glasses, like really yeah, massive and ones. And not Dennis Taylor glasses, because that's what they are, aren't they? But, yeah. It's a snooker player with the weird yeah. glasses. Exactly, yeah. yes. All right, good work. Thanks, Richard. 0345 6060 973. George says, can I ask you to shout out possibly the best read for summer days on a deck chair with a raincoat and an umbrella? the book perfectly normal in a well-run country it's absorbing and warms the cockles on a cold june day that's my book that's my latest one that that's two mentions in the same hour nothing to do with me and uh dan says i've only been water skiing once in britain in bintan in 2007 easily the most testicular pain i have experienced in my adult life i was glad when it was over <laughs> says dan <laughs> A little bit too much information there, Dan, but thanks for that. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Uh, hello. Where are you calling from? 0345 uh, George says, It's a mad, 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 mad world would be a good title for the A to Z of 2024. <laughs> if, if we do those shows over the Christmas period, it's going to be chock a block. The stuff that's happened this year already. We're halfway through. Chris says, What time do I have to wake up to see Grant Shapps lose his seats? <laughs> I'm going to tape... I'll tell you, this is the best idea I've ever had. 
I'm not going to stay up all night. I'm going to tape it starting at about three o'clock, which is when the results start coming in. Because if you if you stay up all night, you're going to be exhausted by three. You, I mean, your um, your elation will be dimmed somewhat by how tired you are. So go uh, go to bed really early. Start the uh, tape at three o'clock in the morning, and then just um, watch the events unfold. Oh. And you can zip forward, uh, you know, uh, between um, the, the the glum looks on your uh, on your favourite targets. I'm genuinely looking forward to it. I, I cannot think of another time that I've uh, looked forward to an election like I have this one. Let's have um, Maidstone, Rob. Hey, Nick. Yes, Rob. I've had my highlight of the entire election campaign was watching question time when the prime minister got booed by the audience <laughs> i tell you what it absolutely made my day and the only thing that made it better mm -hmm. is that he got his ass handed to him by a young south asian woman about the echr who was supported by a working class white guy who told him that he didn't understand the difference between an international court and a foreign court. Now, is it, it, this wasn't the thing last night? Because uh, I don't recognise that. Yeah, right at the end, it was the last question. The woman asked him, the young lady asked him about his strategic mistake with oh, Rwanda, yeah. right. and would they take us out of the ECHR? Mm. Yes, and, I remember that. And he tried, like, waffling at her, and then Fiona Bruce came back and asked her if that was the question, and she went, no. I wanted to know about the ECHR. <laughs> and then this white guy goes, you don't under... The, it's not a foreign call, it's an international call. Yeah. And we join a club, including Belarus and Russia. So I mean, it's just... Such, it, it, what's extraordinary is that politicians, and, and it's not just uh, Rishi Sunak, politicians of many stripes do tend to... I don't know whether they, they have some sort of mental um, panic that they are, are straying from their learned and approved lines, but they seem to be incapable of saying anything other... <coughs> other <coughs> hang on. Glass of water, young man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I still haven't got over that, that thing that I had a couple of weeks ago, whatever that, yeah. uh, whatever that was, the thing. Uh, it was probably the uh, RSC virus that's going around. The what? The RSC virus. It's an upper respiratory tract one that makes your throat and your chest sore. I oh, know it, did, it didn't get sore. I just lost my voice, and it's yeah. not been quite there ever since. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, you, you know me. I never complain. Whinging, oh, and whining, not. and moaning. <laughs> yeah, but the thing that made it really exciting for me, mm -hmm. and like, like, got my faith in the electorate back, yes. is these were ordinary people who were asking real questions to politicians mm -hmm. and making them look stupid well i don't know they were, the, were know they i question that were they ordinary people because um at s several points during the course of that program i thought where did they get these people from some of them don't so al it's almost as though they're not part of the human race I mean, well I, I mean that old lady who was worried about lazy workers had me a little bit concerned i'll be be honest uh, so, but, some of them just looked a bit I don't know, as though they were extras in a in a horror film. Well, that's probably <laughs> because there's been a cost of living crisis, and they're all living on the antidepressants. The doctors have given them. Yeah, and um, and and tending to their own teeth in a lot of you cases. <laughs> there were a couple of those in the audience, but I won't say anything about that. Yeah, no, l leave it to me. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Only less than two weeks to go. I know. Yeah. Isn't it great? Hoorah. All right. Thanks a lot, Rob. Thanks. Cheers, mate. 0345 6060 973. He's never been so H-A-P-P-Y. <laughs> Delirious he is. <laughs> Lee Tex, what's more outrageous, Nigel Farage endorsing Andrew Tate or the fact that he has enough time to watch Emmerdale Farm in the first place? I have no idea what that means. Presumably there's somebody called Andrew Tate on Emmerdale Farm. Isn't it called Emmerdale? Don't ask me, I've got no idea. Has anything happened on that show yet? No. I mean, at all. Gina emails, try avocado on granary toast with black pepper and chili flakes. Flakes, Delicious, says Gina. No, nah, mm, that doesn't sound like anything at all. I mean, granary toast doesn't really taste of very much. I mean, okay, it tastes of more than just white sliced. 
but it's not really a taste sensation, is it? It's the base for something tasty. And avocados, on their own, aren't tasty. It's just bland. I just don't understand this avocado on toast thing. And I really, really don't understand that avocado on toast is part of the war on woke. I mean, <laughs> this country has lost its mind. But I think somebody had it at the end of, I think it was last weekend, maybe at the end of the Saturday show, somebody um, texted in uh, a, men, uh, a, um, a recipe as follows. Get some toast, get some avocado, and then put some bacon on it and eat. Mmm, bacon. And that's good for vegans as well, because uh, bacon is a vegetable. Any fool know that. Let's see now. Uh, Chelmsford. Hello, Jordan. Jordan. Good evening. How are you? Yes, good, thanks. Good, good. Um, look, I have listened to you for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And do you know what? You have actually made me come round to the point of um, being far right to somewhere sensible and aligning with your views. My views? Wow. Yeah, right, you make me... You, you actually calm my blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't have expected uh, you to say that, but OK, that's good. No, and, and I wanted to say that because when it comes to, like, reform, when it comes to reform, yeah. I have always been someone that is hugely in favour of um, Mr Farage, and I like the populist or populism that comes behind that, and, you know, Nigel in England shirt, that, that you know, something that I love. But you always align me. Um, but for me, I'm just... Uh, what, where I'm trying to get to is where we are in terms of the current campaign. Cons I mean, I, was, I voted for Boris in 2019. <laughs> she's not got a chance. I'm going reform. And you've always been the voice of reason for me. Um <laughs> But I just don't know why you wouldn't come over to reform. You don't know why I wouldn't come over to reform? Yeah. Well, why Why would I? Um, well, which is... And I'm not, I'm not taking the Michael, and I'm actually being honest with you, because mm -hmm. um, you've always been the voice of reason. Yeah, yeah. keep saying that. Um, so <laughs> I didn't believe it what, the first time, but go ahead. <laughs> but what, I, what, I don't, what I don't understand is why you and um, others, and um, I, I really like you, but what I don't understand is what you don't, um, what you don't get about Nigel. Right, I feel he's straight talking. You feel he's... People... Wait a minute, wait a minute, back up. He is straight talking. Now, I've heard variations of this. He tells it like it is. That's another way of saying it, right? Yeah, and I've so got some friends that did say you, to me, did you, hang, hang on a minute. Did, did all of the things that he promised about Brexit come true for you? So I voted Brexit. Right, right. and did, did all of the things that he promised come true? No, because it right. was in the hands of the Conservative Party. Yeah, but didn't. it was in the hands of a series of Prime Ministers, all of whom backed Brexit. But they didn't deliver it properly. Oh, no, right. Mean. So the thing that, that is the problem with Brexit is that we didn't have enough of it. Gotcha. All right, all right, Jordan. Thanks a lot for that. We've got a few idiots in our party. 0345 6060 973. This text says, after changing my surname by deed poll, I am outraged that I have been barred from standing as a candidate in my constituency, says Adrian, none of the above. Simon says, the first listener, listener with material. Simon says, first time I tuned into this program, bit of a sensory overload. A sensory overload. <laughs> Bill says, I think Farage deserves respect. R-E-P-E-C-T-P. <laughs> For mentioning the eastern expansion of NATO, one has to put oneself in the other man's shoes, and whether it was the intention or not, it seems a hostile move to Russian eyes. JFK acted firmly when Soviet Union moved nuclear weapons to Cuba in the 1960s. Russian moves on their western border has to be seen in the same light. To put it in rock and roll context, walk a mile in my shoes, says Bill. Oh, get lost, Bill. What's it got to do with him? Whether a country on his border decides or does not decide to become a member of NATO. Like, Vladimir Putin has got uh, a veto over what other countries that happen to be bordering his country can do or not do? 
What is it with these people that are just repeating what Vladimir Blumin Putin says? <laughs> he doesn't need your help. Heston, Isaac. Hello, Nick. Yes. How are you? Isaac. Good, thanks. Right, OK. Um, I've, well, I've got six points, and I'll, and I'll six? speed for them. All right. Yeah, my main one mm -hmm. is, uh, right, when it comes to his betting scandal, OK, uh, what Sunak should do, uh, which I don't think he will, he should make him pay all the money back, right, in cash, OK, I give them a choice of paying the money back in cash or resigning their seats immediately. Okay, that's what I think that he, he should do. Well, the money um, is is uh, small change. I mean, it's that that's the thing that strikes me most about this. Not that it is shocking, mm. because it would be kind of shocking if none of them had bet on the outcome of a piece of inside information. Oh. But it's the amount oh, that's know, involved. Yeah. It's just so small beer. Absolutely tiny, tiny. Right. Anyway, right. Quickly through uh, the other points. Number two, um, I sent off my postal vote today. Um, okay. Um, in fact, in fact, I got my carer to do it. So you know. Right. <laughs> uh, number three. Well, that's I excellent work there. Uh, I, is this the first time you've um, voted postally? Uh, no, I think this is. Um, I think it might be uh, it might be the fourth or fifth time I right. started vote to vote post uh, a postal vote after the 2016 um, Brexit vote. That was the last time I actually went to the booth and um, and um, like um, a 10 minute walk took me an hour. <laughs> you know? Right, because you know, <laughs> no, no, I've got mobility problems. Yeah. But since then. I've had a postal vote. Anyway, number three, I met my local MP last week, lovely lady. Oh, yeah. And I just said to her, um, I just I just said to her, when her and Keir Starmer get into power, just make Britain a happier place. <laughs> That's all I said. Make Britain you know. great again. Let's get our future back. Or some <laughs> asinine <laughs> phrase like that. Yeah. Mm, number four, right. Andrew, right. Andrew Tate was a Luton boy who made who made uh, who, who, who who made lots of money, and may stand you no know, could stand as an MP for the town of Luton. Andrew, you know, so, Andrew right? Tate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure and, he will. Uh, mm -hmm. The other one, fifth one. Uh, I watched the England game, and it was a painful watch. Awful. Oh god. It was as a usual. Watch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but the uh, but you know the rest of the tournament's very good. So and, I don't um, know. Is also, it? Is it? Has it been very good? I I mean I've watched the highlights of uh, pretty much all of the matches so far, yeah. and uh, you know not that great. Yeah. Not really. Yeah, I've enjoyed many of the matches, especially the um, smaller teams. You know, um, um, you know, especially when Albania took. Um, Took the lead after 23 seconds against Italy, oh, but anyway, right. Mm. <laughs> no. right. But, and and finally, okay. The I reckon the the reason the election was called now was because the country will be distracted by the football with around a hundred thousand <laughs> England fans still in Germany on the day of the election. Has anyone anyone ever thought about that? Yeah, uh, that is an interesting thought. So you think that people who um, are who would be travelling to see the England match would be less likely to vote Conservative and that's why uh, Fishy Sunak has uh, well, put it on that day. Less likely to vote, you know, and um, and they'll be distracted, you know. In, in fact, I am suffering from um, election over, you know, um, <laughs> um, 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 overkill at the moment. Yeah. So, so, so what I do is I either... Um, I, I I either go to YouTube or mm -hmm. um, I'm watch, I'm watching the football. One of the two. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least you have some distraction yeah. while uh, all this is uh, going on. And as I keep saying, just the think of uh, those poor Americans because they've got to put up uh, with uh, all of this and more until November. You imagine the pain. I'd be crying too. Thanks a lot, Isaac. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Yeah! Dude! Zach says, can you get a quieter mouse? I hear you clicking every time you go to a caller. First world problem, but very annoying nonetheless. And by the way, did you see Kim and uh, Rootin' Tootin' Shootin' Putin hanging out in North Korea? 
Uh, no, I can't get a quieter mouse. This, this is the only one that is available. Um, and no, I did not see you. Well, I did. I saw a couple of pictures, yeah. David in North Carolina. North Carolina says, I'm going crazy. Trump 2024 flags everywhere, usually on the back of huge pickup trucks driven by those that never finished high school and are friends of the January the 6th hostages. <laughs> yeah, you know, dingalings. He says, I've got to get out of here, says David. <laughs> yes. I know. With everything that's going on in this country, just remember, we could be in America. The American dream is dead. This anonymous email says, Nick might M, and then the number eight. I don't know. Shall I read on? Is it, is it worth reading on? Uh, 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 he's, he's making noises in there now. Uh, 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 being strangled. This anonymous email says, Nick, mate, what makes you, as in the letter you, think Labour will turn things around? They are all the same. Maybe you should do what everyone else sensible is doing and vote reform. It's the only way. Nigel, not scared to tell it as it is, and he could be your mate in a pub. He's down to earth, unlike Sunak and Stammer. Reform is the only way. Not a single comma or full stop in the entire email. <laughs> Whatever your name is, Mr. or Mrs. or Ms. Anonymous, you're an idiot. This anonymous, another one, anonymous email, all in capital letters like they're shouting at me. They put custard powder on some stones. They should go to prison. We should bring back the death penalty. I bet they hate football, chips and the king. <laughs> the Essex, Captain, Gla Captain Gatso. My... As I say round here. Yes. <laughs> hey, Mick. Captain. So, that's just, you were talking about toast a while ago and avocados. Oh, yeah. Uh, which reminds me, uh, in a couple of weeks' time, Tories are toast. Hashtag toast. Uh, a listener with material. Oh, no. You've got one more, t one more um, opportunity right. to redeem so yourself. Yeah, okay, so just a very, very interesting little text are hitting me tonight from friends in no places within Auntie Beeb. A lot of stuff going on at Glastonbury next week. Got to be impartial because of the uh, election. A lot so, of stuff going on at Glastonbury. That, yeah. That's sort of the point. Yes, There's but thousands of things going on in Glastonbury. What do you mean? But apparently a lot of the artists yeah. and... Uh, Performers. Oh, the they'll be uh, telling the kids who to vote for. Yeah, don't don't worry about no, that. The kid, the kids ain't going to be no. voting. Uh, they'll be talking about Gaza and stuff and right. things like that, and they're yeah. going to have to sort of blot it out. Oh yeah, they'll have the uh, the finger hovering over the uh, the the dump button. Warning! Warning! Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, those are artists. You better keep them under your thumb. Well, this is, this is a true thing what I'm talking about. There's a high-level meeting with oh, people. Oh, well, you, you, you should have said true. Well, then uh, that puts a whole different slant on it. Who's at Glastonbury this year? Um, I think there's that young lady, Dua Lipa. <sighs> et cetera, et cetera. Is that it? I mean, I know that's not uh, it, but is she, is she headlining? Can't be. Was it Creedence Clearwater Revival this year, Nick? <laughs> 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 no. It would be good if it was, but it isn't. No. <laughs> no any more than uh, Jimi Hendrix is going to be closing the show at four o'clock in the morning. No, that ain't happening either. No. What about The Clash? That'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, it would be super duper. Yeah, The uh, the Clash could um, have a, a, a fist fight with the Sex Pistols, and um, I, I, I would tune in to watch that. Uh, all right, thanks a lot, mate. 0345 6060 973. Dua... L L I thought it was Dua Leaper. Dua, Dua Leaper. Dua Leaper. Oh, here's, here's the information. Dua Leaper. Cold, cold play. Oh, come on. Oh, fabulous. How many times are they going to get cold play to be the headliners at the Glastonbury Festival? Well, it m must be uh, up to about 20 times now. Isn't there anybody else? Dua Lipa, Coldplay, and SZA. Who's SZA? 
I have no more idea than you, Nick. No, we don't have any idea, because we're old. <laughs> S-Z-A. I'm sure they're uh, absolutely excellent in every regard. I bet they aren't. These, these are the people that are going to headline Glastonbury Festival this year. Oh, that's terrible. Dua Leaper. I mean, she's got that, that song that goes... I can't even remember. But I'm fairly sure I could um, pick out of, um, uh, out of the air if somebody were playing her song. I bet I could uh, probably have a stab in uh, at uh, guessing it was her. Other than that. Um, so, uh, it will also feature Shania Twain in the Legends slot. <laughs> Shania Twain in the Legends slot. What? You've got to be kidding me. Shania Twain is not a legend. Name one song that Shania Twain sang. Bet well, you like, can't. Only that one where she feels like a man, though. Or a woman. A man, I feel like a woman. Woman, I feel like a man? <laughs> <laughs> We've got no idea. Also, uh, including but not limited to, Little Sims, Burner Boy, K-pop boy band 17. Oh, come off it. Idols, Disclosure, The National, Avril Lavigne, Cindy Lauper. Well, if anybody, Cindy Lauper should be in the legend slot. I mean, I know she's only got two tunes, but still. Olivia Dean, Anne Marie. Oh, you're just making this stuff up now. There's no one called Anne Marie. That's a. That's a, a, a uh, no. The Last Dinner Party and Camilla Cabello will also be playing. Wow, that has to be the worst lineup I've ever heard in my life. Still, the um, amount of times that I went to Glastonbury and didn't see a single band were most of the times that I went to Glastonbury. Not one single solitary band did I see in the, you know, the sort of five days that I was there. I went for... I, I, when I went, it was nothing like it is now. E, it were grand when I were a lad. You could uh, park in the pyramid stage field and put your tent next to your car. I am not making that up. Never mind about this taking a bus or a train from the festival to your car and back. No, you could park in the Pyramid Field stage. Can't do that anymore. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's just so much else uh, going on that you uh, won't have to bother yourself with Dua Lipa, Coldplay, SZA, Shania Twain, Little Sims, Burner Boy... 17, Idols Disclosure, The National, Avril Lavigne, Cindy Lauper, Olivia Dean, Anne-Marie, and The Last Dinner Party, and Camilla Cabello, if indeed there are such people. And apparently S-Z-A, says my uh, glamorous assistant next door, is pronounced Scissor. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hip, I'm with it. <laughs> Uh, where am I now? Uh, Tina says, tomato ketchup for... What? Tomato ketchup for fox excretion. Pour it on, let it soak, wipe it off. Poop gone, smell gone. I love tomato sauce, but if it can do that, what's in it? <laughs> I've never heard of anything like that in my life. If your dog rolls in fox poop, cover your dog in tomato ketchup... I don't think so. No, that's got to be a no. 0345-6060-973. Please don't text me with hot dog, hot dog jokes. Not one single one. I mean it. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345-6060-973. Now, wait a minute. I don't like that kind of talk. Now, just stop it. It upsets me. It's a call in Luton. Hello, John. Hi, mate. Yeah. Do you think we're becoming a bit American-like? Because um, on the old uh, voting, the first time I've ever seen uh, Sky sort of announce the amount of money each party's actually um, got, and sort of saying, well, Tories have only got 300 grand, they've got 4.7 million. But, like, I just, it kind of scares me. I think, no, we don't want to go that way. 
Well, I think what scares me is, why do people give money to a political party? If, if I was a billionaire, why would I give, <clears throat> let's say, £10 million to a political party? Is it just because I'm a yeah. nice person, or I like the cut of their jib, or would it be that I want something in return for that? Exactly. And, and, and that's the only thing that... Um, I just hope that they would probably don't blow it. You know, once they get in, they don't get sort of overwhelmed by the power. <laughs> and then they, and then they have to pay back Lord Sainsbury for all the baguettes he's given them or whatever. Mm. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, we just, on the other on side, we had um, Coldplay over in Luton. Oh, yeah. Radio 1, the Radio 1, uh, uh, 30,000 people turned up about four weeks ago. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Um, but, I mean, I'm not saying I, anything I negative about Cold, Coldplay. It's just that it seems a, a bit of a lack of uh, imagination on the part of the people who are booking acts yeah. to just book the same act over and over and over again. There's got to be other yeah. bands, surely. Exactly. Um, and I, I, I don't know whether... And uh, who's that girl in London now? That, well, I don't listen to her music. And the one that everyone's desperate to get to. Not Miley Cyrus, I forget her name now. Oh, you um, know. Uh, yeah, uh, Swifty, the Swift person. Swifty. Taylor <laughs> Swift, yes. Taylor Swift. Now, you see what Richie once should do. He, he's got to get hold of her and give her a call and say, look, it's British government, could you just say Richie has approved by Taylor Swift and he wins the Yeah, leave it with uh, Sw uh, Swifty's people and they'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. well, don't joke about it. That'll be the new political party. No, but if we do get, you think? Uh, do, do you think it's dangerous if we start raise? We, uh, uh, the British people. What difference does it make? How much money you raise? You know, how does that change? And the average British person. Well, it was a new it? story because the Tories normally pull in more money than anybody else. Yeah, uh, and um, and I would have to ask why that happens. Uh, um, I, again, yeah. Yeah. what what is more likely? that if I were a billionaire and I gave £10 million to a political party, would it be yeah. more likely than not that I would want something back for that? Because rich people aren't known for their, uh, uh, their vaunting generosity, are they? They, they no. want something for the money that they shell out. And so what is it? And, and, and it, because they can afford so much more than the rest of us, that means that the country is being run for the benefit of the people with the most money. Which truly is frightening. It is frightening, and it means that Lord Sainsbury, uh, Sainsbury is basically realised he's, he's got a talent, so he backs a winner. Yeah, I can see Labour going to get in, but I've got my, um, I've got my insider dealer there. You see, and that's 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 where we're going to be. Mustn't drift or. By the way, uh, Nigel Farage, when he came on, when when they announced him, and you know when the stink bomb goes off at school, you know it. You don't actually know who actually let it off. Well, whoever uh, whoever uh, smelt it, dealt it. That's what I heard. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I must admit, I made the I made a mistake about Brexit because um, there was no strong opposition to it from the Tories. They didn't know what they were doing. But a biggest mistake I made, and, and millions. That's why we've got to get out of it and go back and say we've made a mistake. But who's going to do that and then actually get us back in the EU in some form? Right. Well, um, I. If I, if I was uh, uh, higher up in the European Union, I wouldn't want us back. <laughs> the, str the strife we've caused. All right, thanks a lot, John. Um, I've got absolutely uh, no idea what the uh, position of Lord Sainsbury is on this or uh, any other uh, topic, but I am uh, absolutely certain that he is uh, an upstanding individual in every regard. I'm going to make that clear. Lee texts, £100 is the maximum stake bookies will take on a bet on politics. Is that true? Why would that be true? I mean, you can bet anything you like on anything you like, on, uh, you know, two raindrops falling down a window pane. Which one's going to reach the ground first? Why would they only take £100 on a bet on politics? Is that, is that true? It, uh, I tried looking for it, Nick, but I haven't found... Yeah, I tried looking for it in the break as well, and I couldn't find it either. So, um, but until proven otherwise, we'll have to uh, uh, assume that Lee is completely correct in every respect. But it seems odd, because, you know, bookmakers, <laughs> they, they would want you to make, uh, to bet as much as possible, because, you know, the house always wins. Let's have York. Hello, Jan. Hello, Nick. How are you? I am great, mate. Good. Um, you know you often talk about the insects on your windscreen? Oh, yeah. 
or, um, or lack of them. But yeah. Have you seen the Bugs Matter survey? No. Ah, well, they do a survey every year, you know. Do they? Um, yeah. You have hundreds of volunteers count the um, insects on their... Uh, they don't use the windscreen, they use their um, number plate. Really? Yeah. The dead insects on your number plate? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. And in the last 20 years, mm. we've lost 78%. Yes, that is a that's figure a that, lot, that, that's a figure that rings that rings true. Yeah, because mm. in in Germany almost by accident they they discovered this because I think they were counting the number of insects in the 1970s. And I can't remember what precisely the the, the purpose of the study was, but uh, by accident they found that decades later fast forward from the 1970s to today we had lost something of the order of 80 percent of all the yeah. all, all of our insects that's a heck of a lot isn't it it's an unbelievably frightening amount mm. yeah i mean <laughs> without insects we all die yeah we're, we're doomed don't we yeah so you know we better do something about it I mean, this is one of the things that people don't talk about with, when they talk about climate change, because mm. all of the animals and the insects and the birds and all the rest of it have, and, and the plants, of course, have grown up being fairly sure of what their um, what the environment is going to be like, yeah. which changes very slowly, but it's changed incredibly quickly lately, and um, it hasn't given the flora and the fauna. <laughs> enough time to change with the changing climate so mm -hmm. they're not they they don't have the the um the ability to withstand such a fast change and if they all die out if insects die out then what food isn't propagated by insects well, pollinated rather not propagated pollinated not, not much really. not much i mean all no. fruits they do that thanks very much yeah. You. Appreciate it. Really like, really enjoying the nec nectarines at the moment. Um, what else? B most vegetables. Yep. Yeah. Just about everything, really, isn't it? Yeah. I think um, we'll we'll have to survive on on turnips and swedes. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a list of things that you know don't um, you know they're no good for it. There's habitat loss. Yeah. Climate change. Mm -hmm. Polluted water. Yes. Uh, pesticides, right, and people who cut the grass too often. Uh, yeah, and we are guilty of all of the above. Yeah, and then there are some people that have those awful electric bats, isn't there? <laughs> 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 well. In the defence of the people that have the electric bats with mm -hmm. which to uh, kill stray insects, I only mm -hmm. use mine on clothes moths. Right. And I, I, I feel that um, I am, uh, uh, it's the right thing to do. No. It is. Can it? Uh, no, it isn't really. No, it, it, it is, it, though. I mean, I don't even kill spiders anymore because somebody sent me um, from Canada, they sent it all the way from Canada, and like it's, mm. it's a grabby hand. Yes. With uh, with filaments that sort of close over the spider, don't hurt the spider, but it keeps it at, at more than arm's length, which is that's key. Right, that's right. Yeah, and then you that's just what you need, don't you? Something chuck it. Arm's yeah, length. then you chuck it outside, and some bird will eat it. Mm. Can I just tell you something funny? <laughs> um, okay. Um, I watched Question Time last night. Yeah, me too. And I began to feel sorry for Richard Sunak. Did you? I did. When? I really did. When? Well, quite near the end, I, I, I saw him standing there and he looked so pathetic. I think it's the clothes and, that he wears. I am so sick of seeing him in that, in that same suit, for crying out loud. <laughs> I, I thought he'd soaked it to the extent that he'd had to throw it away when he announced the uh, election. But he's, <laughs> either that or he's, he's got ten suits, all the blooming same. And those skinny ties. I am sick mm. to death of seeing him in those stupid skinny ties. I yeah. couldn't take my eyes off his skinny tie because the the back bit, you know, the the I don't know what you call it. The, like there's the front bit of the tie, and then there's the back bit, and it kept creeping out, which is a big no no for uh, tie wearers. I mean, I'm no expert on ties, but you don't want to see the back of your tie tie at the front. Yeah, the the tail of your tie. Mm. Um, at the front of you, but but that's the danger of, of wearing a skinny tie. He should have taken the tail of it, the back bit, and stuck it in his shirt. Mm, but you know, he was just standing there, and 
every, nearly everybody in the audience would be against him. And I thought, oh dear, poor chap. Oh, <laughs> poor Rishi. <laughs> I, couldn't believe, I couldn't believe myself, really. But <laughs> you want to give yourself a shake, Jan? I think I do. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Thanks for that. Cheers, my dear. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. I really like you. Do you like me? Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Will texts, I bet the splurging of private jets is more of a severe crime than the Stonehenge stunt. To be clear, I do not have any relations in the justice system and no actual wager has been placed. Yeah, I bet the people who um, splurged the, a couple of private jets get more of a punishment than the people who uh, did the Stonehenge stunt. Because people who travel on private jets are friends of the regime. Oh, uh, yes. Um, and Sue says, my husband was booked in for surgery on his knee for after our holiday in Madeira. In Madeira, he went out on a jet ski and it was so fierce he jolted and knocked his knee on the handlebars. His knee pain disappeared and the operation was cancelled. Well, I, <laughs> I don't recommend it. That's a bit like winning the lottery, that is. Uh, probably you could, even if you tried, you wouldn't be able to uh, recreate that. Bodmin, hello, Malcolm. Hello, Nick. Malcolm. Nick, um, <laughs> media. Oh, man. What an election. Everybody in the world was worried that these elections would be the most unsafe, unsecure elections ever. But for the Tories, they couldn't be working out worse. You, you, you've got, uh, I'm, I'm almost certain that you've got TV executives who are saying, we've got to do everything we can to get the people to make a good decision this time around. Because the stuff that's appearing on the news about the Tories and that, that piece you did earlier about the spending, that is simply there to say, hey, look, folks, that, folks the Tories have literally got no backers at all. In other words, big money, rich people, big industry. Um, what is it that the right wing will call it? The, the establishment yes. are not backing the Tories. Right. They're giving them nothing. Which, them, yeah, mean, which, which actually gives you pause for thought, doesn't it? I mean, if, yeah. if a billionaire has decided not to back the Conservative Party anymore, then you have to wonder, is a billionaire's interest, does it coincide with my own? And the answer is no. So, hmm. Well, look, it's, it's not for me to attack the Prime Minister personally. But? But, <laughs> but... When you see him on his in, in his election performances, no matter where it is, whether it's out on a farm chasing sheep, yeah. or whether it's 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 in a factory or whatever it is, you look at it and it is it, it is just disastrous. I mean, last night the perfect example, Prime Minister, um, this national service thing. Let's talk sanctions. What are you going to do? Yeah. Well, <laughs> we, we could stop their driving licenses. Yes. We could stop their bank, their bank accounts. We, we could, could um, stop their access to finance. That's what he said. We can. We could double their their interest rates on their student loans. Right. Well, he you didn't. Know, we he anything. didn't say. He didn't say that. <laughs> we can do whatever we want. Yeah. Give him a yeah. damn good and thrashing. You can see. You, you, you can imagine that the Tory minders backstage with the blood literally draining <laughs> from their faces. Thinking, my God, what is this man on? Yeah. But the, the, the other thing then was, so you you got that, and then you got the betting thing. And it's it, it just, I keep saying it to every Friday, or whenever I have an opportunity to speak to you, the, the, the sheer at the stupidity of conservative people in the party yeah. in London. It, it is mind-blowing. It, like, it I, really I, is. I mean, apart from anything else, it's just the small well, amount of money that is involved with the potential downsides are so big. A hundred quid, they bet. I mean, that's just, assuming that they did, that is pathetic. I mean, it's just, it's well, embarrassingly small. No, but Nick, it's, it's, it's habit, isn't it? I mean, what else are they doing that's, uh, that's bringing in four hundred pounds, five hundred pounds? What other little ruses have these people got their their, their their fingers in? But like, for me, you, you you look at the the party and you think it's it, it is just it, it's gone. It, it's absolutely finished. And you got Farage. I mean, 
But the Tories to be losing to Nigel Farage. Well, that they're, is, they're, they're, they're not, though. They're, they're not. I mean, I've, I've seen only one poll put the reform ahead of the Conservative Party. No, no, that's not what I mean, Nick. That's, that's not what I mean. The, the, the Tories are, are, will literally lose hundreds oh, of see. seats right. because of a few, uh, um, a few reform votes well, in each seat. Yeah, I'm not sure that and that's true. But they are certainly losing, um, uh, losing supporters. Yeah, let's just leave it at that. Yeah, but I mean... For me, and then the other thing is, and, and I don't want to attack anybody who phones into <laughs> LBC, but, but. <laughs> let's, let's speak generic terms. Yes. You get conservative voters phoning in saying, I'm scared of what the Labour Party will do. Mm. I, I'm, I'm thinking, my God, you, you've got 20 odd individuals who are on the TV every day bearing their souls on the Labour Party side, and you've got literally nobody other than gra- um, four name shops. <laughs> You've got the transport fellow who is utterly useless. You've got Sunak himself. You've got the Gitto Hari, who is Boris Johnson's fellow in the media, all over the, the media now in this election. And you're thinking, what is going on? They do but, seem to be running away. Well, for, well, for, for the people phoning in there, for so-called conservative voters to, to, to ring a radio station and say, I'm scared of Labour, I'm scared of Keir Stam. I mean, hmm. the guy is... If, if nothing else, he was the director of public pr- prosecution, so he he has some integrity, I think. He's, he's he, yes, there's the, the Ming Vaz issue, but for a Tory voter to ring and say I'm scared of Starmer, when they're looking at the last twelve years <laughs> in the face, in, in the face, and and saying oh the, the, oh they don't scare me those Tories they don't scare me not one bit but Labour oh my God Nick it's 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 oh God Alice in Wonderland isn't it. Up is down and down is up. It's madness. It's like um, uh, somebody told um, the, uh, the the following scenario. And then this was about American politics, and um, the option that uh, the American people have uh, between uh, Joe Biden and um, Donald Trump. And they said it's like being on an airline, and the stewardess comes around and asks you, uh, "Which would you uh, like for dinner? You can have uh, the chicken." Or a poop sandwich with broken glass in it. And the person on the plane pauses for a moment and says, How's the chicken cooked? <laughs> hey, hey, listen, on, 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 um, on, on, on social media, but it's being reported on Apple News tonight, Keith Starmer has, has posted a picture of him with 80 odd thousand of his voters in a football stadium in London at a, um, a music concert. We, and, and you can probably guess who he's watching. But he's a... Keir yeah, Starmer he's a, he's has gone to see Taylor Swift. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah. And, and him and his wife, and they're high up in the stand. Doing a oh, come back, um, on. I mean, is he taking... Stage does stage. he have kids? Is he taking his kids? Or he can't possibly listen, be going on his own? I imagine his... The, the, the kids that will be there. But listen, right, Tay okay. Tay, I'll have you know, she's, she's a Democrat, right? She supports... Well, uh, she did Biden last time. She hasn't. Uh, she hasn't uh, nailed her colours to the mast this time around. Apparently, Taylor Swift. She. She. She was uh, all in with uh, Joe Biden last time, but this this time around we don't yeah. know. She. She will. She. She will. I reckon she will. I'm right. certain. And I wouldn't be surprised if if there's something in the media about Keith Starmer from her as well. Right. She. She's brilliant. I mean, the the, the Cardiff gig. They. They reckon that's the best concert that's ever been... Oh, in, come in off it, Malcolm. You no, can't be serious. Oh, Nick, you're into prog rock and all, all this... I'm this into this all stuff. sorts of music. Garbage. I just... I just <laughs> Garbage. Pink Floyd. Yeah. Garbage. Get lost. I'm into all kinds of music. I'm into uh, jazz music, Groovy. and I'm into um, yeah 1970s rock, Yowza. and I'm into um, you know chill out music, oh. and everything in between. But I do not like twelve year old girls music, Malcolm. You want to uh, get yourself sorted out there. You're not a Swifty. You're way too old. I am. I am. <laughs> no. no. You're not. And furthermore... No, 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 no. No. And there's a picture of him there with... Um, is that his wife? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen her before. Is, is doing well? 
how is that how is it that i've never seen his wife before isn't she quite enthusiastic about not being seen i've got well if that is the case then she's doing an excellent job because um i had no idea i mean we pretty much know um well, we knew who uh, Boris Johnson's uh, fiance was before uh, he uh, married her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Um, if you can remember which one it was, you just had to keep up at the time because he just seemed to, you know, change them frequently. But I think we can remember as a nation who he's married to at the moment, and um, the, uh, the the can Lisbot. Can we? Do we know who the Lisbots? Oh yeah, I know who the Lisbots' uh, husband is. Absolutely. Yes, I remember that. He was problematic, no? <laughs> um, well, I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> Something rings a bell in my mind. That's, right. Uh, uh, a bell. Yeah. Well, as soon as uh, it uh, becomes a clear thought, I want you to let me know straight away. All right. But there's his wife. I have no idea. And there he is in, um, uh, is that Wembley Stadium? It's absolutely colossal. All of those people. All of those 12-year-olds in that audience screaming their heads off at Taylor Blooming Swift. <laughs> I could not tell. If my life depended on it, I couldn't tell you the name. No, no, no mind about sing it. I couldn't tell you the name of a Taylor Swift song. But I'm not a 12-year-old girl. So that's my explanation. Uh, thanks a lot, Malcolm. Cheers, mate. Choose some... Um, I'm, I'm going to send you some uh, Yes albums in the post. All right. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> Slammed the phone down. He's just stormed away. He's furious. Yeah, some Yes songs on the way to you. You're welcome. Thank you. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850, email nicka at lbc.co.uk, and if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Chris texts, tape the election. Oh, my God, I'll have to go out and get one of those newfangled VHS TV tape recorder thingies from Comet, says Chris, who I do believe is being sarcastic. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. You're joking. So what are we doing? Given we are doing a radio show, but it does remind me, I do a podcast with Carol McGiffin. Oh, right, yeah. I think that we're going to meet up this week. Fireworks will ensue. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, I think that she's uh, going to be flying in. Her arms will be so tired when she gets here. Uh, but we will be recording two episodes of our Super Soar Away podcast during the week, uh, regardless of what happens when she gets here. And um, there's... They must be getting on for 150 episodes up there at the moment. A hun uh, more or less 150 episodes. I cannot believe that we haven't killed each other um, in the making of 150 episodes of our podcast. If you wish to uh, just tune out of all of this, then I can guarantee it will be election-free. And it's, um, it's a, it's a, a dilemma-solving podcast. We solve people's problems or make a bash at it. Now, if you have a problem that you want us to solve, then simply send it to the following address, nickandcarol at global.com. N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com. But prepare for total satisfaction. Yeah. Ask for it by name on an internet near you. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? East Grinstead. Hello, Benedict. Yeah, hi. How are you doing? All good. right? Yes, good, thanks. Yeah, I was just, just, just uh, listening in earlier on. You were uh, debating why they can only have a £100 bet on those kind of political bets. Yeah. Uh, the reason is they, they want to, the bookmakers want to try and avoid fraudulent betting. Right, but why, so but why is it... So you're saying that it's a £100 bet, but only about politics? 
Yes, politics and certain things that, that could that you could actually override that could become fraudulent, which makes the whole thing even worse, doesn't it? Well, it, it, it makes it sound as though uh, the gambling industry is expecting that people involved in politics are criminals. In, well, yes, and, uh, and also inside information all the time. I mean, you know, the, <laughs> the thing that makes me laugh, you know, because if you knew that that was going to happen, you wouldn't have a hundred quid on it, you'd have a hundred thousand pounds on it, wouldn't you? It, well, you yes. That, it's be, but, yeah, exactly. That's what, makes the, that's what makes the whole thing so laughable and so outrageous, what these people are doing. I mean, how stupid are they? <laughs> and, and, you know, and they, and they are the people that are going to try and run our country. I know, it's, and, re and it's remarkable that they, they made such a risky move, potentially, I mean, assuming that they did, and this isn't all just blown up out of all proportion, but assuming that what they are accused of is what they actually did, then it's such small beer, it's just, it's, it's laughable, it's, it's uh, pathetic, yeah. it's a national embarrassment. I mean, we can't even do um, criminal activity right. No, I mean, that's, and that, and that, uh, it, it's completely laughable in the fact that you think that if they're that clever, why would you, you know, you would, you would go and put, wouldn't you, a hundred thousand pounds, that's what I'm saying, but yeah. that, they, they know they can only get over a hundred pounds, well, let's all do that and try and get a quick 500 quid, whatever they got, five <laughs> to one, I think. Yes. Yeah, exactly, to, 500 uh, quid. Yeah on, of, yeah, on top of our wages that we're ripping off the, you know, the whole bloody nation of what we've been paid for, and we're going around doing that, I mean, it's just I mean, unbelievable. It is unbelievable, I mean, the 500 pound is a lot of money to some people, but not those people. Yeah. No, no, exactly. And, but also, you just wouldn't do that, would you? I mean, it's just, you have to be, the, the morals that they must have is just beyond me. I mean, you know, you, you wouldn't do that to your best mate, would you? Try and rip them, and they are ripping us off as, as taxpayers. We're putting that money in, and they're like, oh, I'll have a bit of that, I'll, I'll nick some of that out, you know? It's just, it really is beyond belief. Why, I mean, I, I assume that they would do it because they, couldn't contemplate the notion that they would be caught out or that anybody would question them about it. No, exactly. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and, you know, if you really wanted to do it, you'd have got your mates to go and put it on, wouldn't you, this, that, and the other. But, you know, that would be even sadder in a way. But why would you even be that desperate to, to just do that for the sake of the money? What I don't... Um, what I, I find really kind of surprising is that, that people don't assume that this is how finance works. Finance works through insider information. That's how those yeah. people make hundreds of millions of pounds because they have the information before the rest of us dopes do. That, and exactly. they're, not, they're not geniuses, they just know more than we do before we know it. Yeah, I mean, just look at our Prime Minister. Where's his, a lot of his money come from? I mean, look at the stock markets, the markets, how they work. It's, it, it's just, you know, the legal system, the, it, 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 it's mind-blowing, seriously. If we all looked into it and saw it, we'd all, you know, look at the post office issues that are going on, you know, with that. And yeah, it, it's pretty terrible, isn't it, the whole, yeah. the whole scenario, I think, at the moment. And, um, and also, you know, you, you, when you start looking into the kind of, issues with people gambling problems and whatever and that they're representing our country these these, these politicians and there's, there's issues with people that can't pay for a plate of food on the table and they're, they're having gambling issues and they're actually encouraging it by oh i'm going to do that as well you know. <laughs> It's just unbelievable, yeah. isn't it, really? Uh, and I bet you £100 that we haven't heard the uh, the, the end of uh, this. There's going to be more names coming out, I bet you. Betcha, betcha. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, they will be. And, and, and also, I think, you know, you just look at all of them. They're all, they're all in it having a jolly, aren't they? And we're the ones that sit there and put the money in the pot and they all go and enjoy it, you yeah. know. Uh, mugs, I think, is the uh, technical term for us. Thanks a lot, Benedict. 0345 6060 973. This anonymous email says, did you hear those Swedish people yesterday? They were singing, England, England, it's never coming home, to the tune of Yellow Submarine. England, England, it's never coming home. Why doesn't that Paul McCartney sue them? Says this uh, person. We wouldn't sing songs like that about Sweden. We'd sing them about Germany, like a civilised country. <laughs> It's never coming home. I don't think that you can, with any justification, call it call this home, can you? 
as far as uh, any uh, football silverware is concerned, I don't think you can genuinely call this country home for any of it. I mean, it's like uh, a, a grown-up child of uh, 60 years old still calling their parents' place home. It isn't. Graham says, I mean, unless they're living there still, in, in which case it is. But, you know, usually it isn't. Graham says, you are rarely wrong, but election night must be enjoyed live. I've booked the Friday off, and when the 10pm exit polls are announced, I'm going to nip out to the garden and set off a massive firework rocket. I hate and ethically disagree with fireworks, but this will be epic. I shall then stay up all night with the sparkling and then red wine and soak up the whole wonderful thing, says Graham. Well, see, I'm going to be on air that Friday, so... I don't think I can stay up all night because I'll just be destroyed by the time I get here on uh, Friday evening. Uh, plus, it just takes so long for the results to come in. I mean, if it starts to dribble out at about three in the morning and then like three hours later, it's still coming in. It's, I can't stay up that late. So I think that I've got the best idea. I mean, I would prefer to see it live, but you know what they should do? Instead of it coming out all night long, they should just seal all the boxes and start in the morning. Why do those poor people have to count through the night? I mean, it's not going to change the result any, is it? They should just put a seal over the boxes, start at 9 o'clock in the morning like a civilised uh, country, and then the result could uh, come, uh, you know, over uh, daytime television. Better. Sam says, the best toast is sourdough with real butter and good quality strawberry jam. You know what? I'm going to agree with you uh, there, Sam, as long as we're talking about a lot of butter. Mm -mm. Let's have a call in uh, Oldbury, Ranjit. In it, you're right, mate. Yes, good, thanks. Uh, right, yeah, this thing about the full moon, yeah? Yes. Okay. One of my customers, I was just talking to her the one day. And she works in an A and E department. Hmm. Okay. And she's convinced that a lot more people come into A and E um on a full moon. Yeah, I don't I don't know about that. I think that we're primed to to um to detect weird behaviour and associate hmm. it with a full moon. But that same behaviour outside of a full moon, we wouldn't think, oh, that's because we've got, uh, you know, uh, a waxing or waning moon. We, we just wouldn't associate it with uh, a lunar event at all. Yeah, but I asked her and she, you know, she was convinced. She goes, you know, I've seen the record. I mean, she could, still comes in and I said, you know, is it still a pattern? She goes, yes. And it's uh, one of the big hospitals in Birmingham. Yeah. But there's no earthly and reason why, though, because I mean, it used to be the case that uh, a full moon was associated with, uh, you know, lunatic behaviour. That's because mm. before electricity, it would light people's way, and in the middle of the night, they could, uh, you know, make, uh, I, uh, cause my, havoc uh, uh, and by the light of the moon. But we don't it, do that anymore. Okay, but the thing is, our skull, our brain is surrounded by water, isn't it, to protect it crashing into the, the skull, so maybe there's a lunar <laughs> pull on it. Anyway. No, Ranjit, okay. no. Think no, about no, it. No, Think. Ab wait a minute. Uh, wait, wait, uh, wait. Uh, well, Think about what you okay. just said. Just mm. because it's a full moon doesn't mean to say there's more of mm. the moon up there. It's still the same amount of moon, it's just lit different. I don't know. Its that's effect okay. on that's the that's water that's is the same. Mm. Yeah, that, that's just a sideline. But the other thing, you know this betting scandal that's going on, right? Yeah. You know me, I don't take a lot of things for face value, right? Because they'd have to be really, really, really thick, right? To go and bet in their own name and just a hundred pounds. Yeah. Right? Okay. I think, just like everything else that the Tories do, they leak out these little stories, right, where we start talking about them. And there's something probably sitting oh, right behind. Distraction. Yeah? Right. Distraction, yeah. I'm not Cause sure, because like, it's just so embarrassing. No, it, it's that embarrassing that it, ma <laughs> it makes us really look, all, all of us, forget the go all of us look stupid. Yes. And, and these are the people that are running us. 
right? And other countries, exactly. other countries are laughing at us at this but moment. Big time, big time. Now, Sakir Starmer can kick a few idiots out, yeah, because if he's got because he's he's so far ahead. Now, Rishi Sunak is finally realizing beggars can't be choosers, right? So if he's going to win, I don't know, 100 seats, and if he loses two of them, that's 2% of his um, <laughs> power gone, isn't he? And that, that, and that's that's a mathematical thinking. fact, yes. Yeah. Undeniable, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. And and, and the, the one couple of things that he was talking about, the, this anonymous letter that was into the paper about um, private schools. You know, you read it out last week, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, when I was in school... The way they used to measure our intelligence, we used to have a reading age, didn't we? Right. right. You know, back in the 70s. Yeah. Right? So you would read. Hmm. And if you was 10 and your reading age was 12, that means, you know, you was pretty bright. And if you was 12 and your reading age was 8, that means you was pretty dim. That was basically in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. So I listened to you reading that letter out. And that reading age is definitely somebody, you know, probably in there mid-30s, you know, with a degree, yeah? Now, you're but asking me to remember a letter that I read on this show last no, week. No, 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 no. No, I'm going to come to... I mean, if you look at the way Donald Trump talks, yeah? Yes. With, what's his reading age? Reading I mean, age of reading about, age. about five. About five, yeah. You know, I know a lot about wind. I know, yeah. And the way he talks... It's very yeah? effective because, you know, most people have a very low reading age. I mean, if, uh, like, the reading mm. age of the sun, I think, I mean, I can't remember exactly what it is, mm. but it's it's surprisingly low. If mm. uh, like it's, But it's written like that for people who have that kind of reading age. And even, the, mm. the, like, a, a highfalutin newspaper like The Guardian or The Telegraph, the, the reading mm. age is, is also surprisingly low. You know, it'll be sort of teenage uh, reading age. Mm. The, the the words that were used in that article and the way the the, the grammar of it, yeah, yeah, it was like, oh, if I get to, if I get touched by somebody poor, it might be contagious and stuff like <laughs> that, right? And that's how it sounded. Or I might get stuck. Well, you know, I'm at a disadvantage here because I can't remember what it is that you're talking no, about. Right. Anyway, it was. I mean, one of the things. I mean, I don't watch EastEnders, but a few years ago I watched it, right? And the woman in the pub, right, she had this really posh dog, and the dog, and he was a female dog. And he kind of um, played mummies and daddies with the most common dog that was in the square. Oh. And that's what this reminded me about. These people that, you know, that want to send... There's nothing wrong with trying to send, I don't think. If, the, if every school in the land was really, really good, and somebody wanted to send them to a private school, hmm. and they've got the money, that would be fine. But whoever wrote that anonymous letter, right, should put their name to it. And I'll bet you that person is definitely going to be well over 30 and right. definitely well, with a degree. Again, yeah? I have no idea uh, no. what the letter is that you're talking about, Ranjit. So I'm <laughs> going around and around in a circle there and I've got no clue what it is that we're talking about. But I've got to go. Thanks a lot, mate. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. You're joking. 0345 6060 973. Pete says, uh, in relation to the last caller, he says, ask Ranjit if we'll get a discount at his chippy if we mention your name. Pete, I guarantee that if you go into Ranjit's fish and chip shop and mention my name, he will sell you a bag of chips at the regular price. That is my guarantee to you. Uh, tooting. Hello, Jan. Hi, good evening, Nick. Yes, How are Jan. You? I am great, mate. Great. <laughs> no, Nick, Nick, I was so, I had a real surprise this week when I saw the paper. I don't know if you saw it. It was, the, it was in the Independent where it says, um, Johnson, I couldn't believe it, but Boris Johnson, Bojo, is, um, look, plotting a, some sort of com comeback, but, but he's, he's, <laughs> <laughs> and the picture of him, have you seen the photo that was put, maybe it's an old photo, but it's got a thick picture of him with his, it's just like his hair is wild, you know what I mean? Like he's in a, a, a windy, but... but his, his, his brand was to look disheveled, and it's, he's, he's looked the same, the exact same way 
ever since he was in school. You can see old pictures of him <laughs> in school. He's got the precise same haircut and that same uh, uh, shirt untucked. Oh, poor, who, me? Uh, that, that routine. He's doing the same thing as he did when he was a child. Yeah, and I've it's got a uh, and, it, and it's not um, as uh, charming as some people once thought it might have been. But these days, he just looks, he just looks like a good, like a walking disaster. He just looks like a catastrophe. <laughs> like, like he needs an intervention. But it's extraordinary that he thinks that, that he's looking to have a comeback. He, he's he's saying something about that he'll come back. And, come and fight for the Tory party if there's a wipeout at this election, but he might wait till 2028. 20, and he's plotting something. <laughs> he's the person who's done a bag of his, he's saying he's plotting something. But coming back to his hair quickly... Well, I think he's, he's going to need a trip to a health farm or something like that. If he's, <laughs> if he's planning on being alive by that point, he's going to have to uh, do something different than what he's doing at the moment, because it looks like he's killing himself. Yeah, because, I mean... Uh, but... but Coming back to his hair quickly is that there was some picture. I think his, when he was a kid, he used to have his hair ruffled a lot. Yeah. And he did, he did that to his own son, I think, in some pictures that were put out a few years ago he's, he's, it, with him and his wife or with the, the kid's hair, like no, his I've, hair. I've, I've never seen that. I've, I've got no did yeah. you see that? No, I didn't know. Oh, well, maybe that's, maybe it runs in the family. He's doing it to his own... Um, well, he artfully his disassembles his hairdo for the cameras. I mean, most people smarten themselves up for the cameras. <laughs> he, because, because it's his act, he, um, he, he ruffles himself and, uh, and makes himself look more crumpled for the cameras because <laughs> it's, it's sort of, it makes him seem um, uh, less, um, I don't know, what's a nice way of saying evil? <laughs> oh, no, a little, a little funny. less evil, you know, more, yeah. more f friendly and and warm, which is the opposite of who he actually is. But Nick, what, what, this, I, I mean, I, could, I just can't believe it that he thinks he he he, he can do a comeback. No, because look, even Penny, it says like there's um, a lot of the the, the present the leadership rivals, Penny Morden, Grant, <laughs> Shout, Robert, mm -hmm. Jenrick. Yeah. It, 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 could be unseated, you know, in this um, election. Yeah. So, 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 I mean, it's, I just can't believe it. And he's, can you, I mean, what do you think of that? Um, that I think that his um, opinion of himself uh, is, um, uh, is, um, <laughs> Is beyond what you would expect of somebody who has a good idea of who they are. I, I, I assume that he's just sailed through life with nobody ever saying the word no to him. Not, mm -hmm. not, not really. No, no consequences from any any of his actions. Not really. He just he just keeps picking up the money. So oh, I would no, imagine no. his uh, his uh, sense of uh, self worth is uh, is vaunting. <laughs> I, I was shocked to see what he gets for his... He's supposed to be doing a book on Shakespeare. Yeah, sure he is. And he, he's already been paid for up front half a million. Uh, well, that's he's the... He's been uh, putting it off. Yeah. And well, what's the other thing? He gets, he gets a million pounds a year for his column and the mail. I well, just found, well, found well, that out. It's extraordinary sums of money he's making. Yeah, talk about um, a buyer's remorse. <laughs> I mean, if, if the people who didn't sign that contract with the mail aren't uh, ruining the day, then uh, I'd be amazed. Here, Janet, got to go, but thanks for that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Jeremy Corbyn uh, would have made a better Prime Minister than Boris Johnson, Skier claimed last night on that uh, show. Do you see that? That nice lady off the Antiques Roadshow quizzed Skier on whether he'd endorsed Uncle Jezza in the past, and he, he seemed disinclined to say that he had. But Fiona started snapping at his heels uh, like a Shih Tzu, <laughs> and she wouldn't let it go. It was, it was a trap, basically. You know, you said you wanted Jeremy Corbyn as Prime Minister. Do you th still think he would have made a good PM, she said. And Skier acted like a human being, rather than a robot. Correct. And said he was working for a Labour win, and Jezza was a party candidate, so that's who he endorsed. Because that's how politics works. <coughs> but Fiona kept on at him. You know, you said he would be a great Prime Minister. Do you, th do you still think that? And on and on and on. And after some wriggling, Skier came out with Jeremy Corbyn would have made a better Prime Minister than Boris Johnson. 
which has a ring of truth to it. I mean, who or what would not have been a better Prime Minister than Mr Blobby? Um. I mean, Coco the Clown would have been a better Prime Minister than Bodger. A skip load of timber on fire would have been a better Prime Minister than Bodge. Liz Truss would have been a better Prime Minister than him. Absolutely. Oh, OK. I've gone too far. Not the Lizbot. We no longer require your services, Liz. That is a disgrace. But if Blobby had been replaced with an ice cream sundae, it would have been a better Prime Minister than he was. They could have put a shop window dummy in number 10 and we would have had a better leader than him. The great big greedy nincompoop. The jolly green giant would have made a better prime minister. A random set of letters pulled from a scrabble bag would have made a better leader than the blob. Ain't that right, Bodge? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait a minute. And Skier was asked about the number of U-turns that he had performed in office. He said the damage caused to the economy by the Tories meant he now had to prioritise resources for the NHS. It was his number one. Party. Under my leadership, the government's priorities are your priorities. The people's priorities. It's the country's number one priority. It's, uh, he's gripping it. And, um, I don't know, maybe, uh, it's too excruciating to go through the uh, details. But, as a, as a sort of a PS, um, uh, in that uh, famous column of his, the, he, the, the, he dashes off, he f or phones in, uh, from uh, hair-brained haystacks, Mr Blobby himself. His uh, column was, unless, Sir, unless Keir Starmer revokes his endorsement of a Corbyn premiership, he is simply not fit to be Prime Minister. And if there's anyone who knows all about what it takes to be not fit to be Prime Minister, it's hair-brained haystacks himself, eh, Bodge? I, I can't comment on that. I, 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 he even had the nerve to write this sentence. This is in his column for the Mail. Boris Johnson's column. He said, I always thought that Corbyn was, wittingly or unwittingly, a tool of Moscow. Boris Johnson said that. Can he hear himself? Maybe he should cut back on the refreshments. He also, he also wrote this. So let us imagine that Starmer had got his way and Corbyn had actually been running this country in February 2022. It would have been Jeremy Corbyn sitting there in those crucial early meetings of the G7, of NATO, of all the key groupings of Western powers. Yeah. Or, imagine if a self-serving clown had got into number 10. It would have been him missing the emergency meetings to address the COVID pandemic, which killed a quarter of a million people in this country because he was busy sorting out his love life and not writing a book that never appeared. I don't know much about Jeremy Corbyn, but I bet he wouldn't have been so uninterested in the plight of the people he was supposed to be representing that he would have done that. But maybe I'm wrong. We'll never know. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. He is a very sick and dangerous man. Uh, there's um, a message here about Rivita. Where is it? Oh, uh, here we go. Anonymous text. Rivita is the best, with half a slice of cheese of choice. Add tomatoes and cucumber, etc., and it's a great snack. I like Rivita. I haven't had it in, a, in such a long time. I've forgotten it exists. But I'd have to disagree with you there, because I think you've missed out one uh, vital ingredient. You want to turn it up so that it's dimple side up. Not flat side up, because that's no good. Dimple side up and then fill all those crevices with butter. Mm, mm. I mean, that is an uh, excellent uh, snack, just in and of itself. So yummy. Is there anything that butter does not improve? Now, I know that's probably against uh, Rivita's uh, ethos or credo, because it's, um, it's supposed to be a, a weight... A not weight watching thing, but it's like you know, if you're watching your weight, I think it's uh, isn't it so on that basis? It's supposed to make you um, s uh, thin and beautiful. It is your duty to be beautiful. That's just a fact. Glasgow, hello, David. Hi, Nick. David. My goodness. 
<laughs> I'm just back from a 10-day fishing holiday in on the Isle of Lewis, now to Hebrides. Oh, yes. And if ever I wondered why I went, I'm just listening to <laughs> Ranjit and Jan. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking about turning that boat around? Nothing, and... nothing, nothing personal, Ranjit right. or Jan. No, it's just not. a politics thing, yeah. you know. So did you catch anything? Oh, loads, yeah. What did you catch? Trout. Trout? Yep. Is it edible? No, don't be silly. Well, is it? Trout, of course it is. Well, I don't know, but I mean, I know trout is um, is a dish, but is it edible from the waters that you pulled it from? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, right. there's Lewis, I mean, in fact, the, the use in general, I mean, there are thousands of small locks, they call them lockins, mm. where there are purely wild brown trout, and I do mean wild, you know. How big is a trout when you pull it out of the water? Well, they vary. I mean, you get the stock variety, which are mainly rainbow trout, not so much up there, thankfully. Um, the wilder trout aren't so big in size, but in quality, there's no comparison, really. Well, give us an idea. How many, uh, like a foot long? More? Less? What? Um, probably between... Yeah, about a foot. About a foot. Right. That would be a good, a good brown trout. And do you, anyway, th do you throw them back? Uh, depends how big the bag is. If I'm having a bad day, certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it's not the catching of the fish, is it? It's just the being there no, and the zoning that, out, isn't it? Ex exactly that. Yeah, yeah. So imagine my surprise when I return to a, a totally arid Glasgow. There's not been a drop of rain here for weeks, apparently. Oh, I can't believe that. And, well, neither can I, but allegedly, all my neighbours are telling me this. Okay, then. Um, to find that Bear in mind, when I left, uh, Rishi had, I mean, oh, God, it, 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 that, that's the last straw. It was a DD thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I come back... You, and I come, you said, right, that's it, I'm leaving. <laughs> well, I come back to find that apparently some of his staff have been, uh, how to phrase, making dodgy bets. Yeah, allegedly, yeah. Allegedly, yes. allegedly. That's right. Well, you know, I think, you know, if Tories want to die in a hill, I just didn't think it would be William Hill. <laughs> oh, these are the jokes, folks. I've been saving it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I that, think, as, that, as they say... Uh, all right. <laughs> OK, as I think they say in Glasgow, David, are we and boil your heed... I'll be that son. Me right. brother. <laughs> Thanks a lot, mate. O three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Rebecca says your plan is okay about election night, but you have to watch the result of the exit poll at ten before you go to sleep. Then wake up at three to see the to see the details. No, I'm not waking up at three o'clock in the morning. I'm just not doing that. I will wait to see the exit poll at ten o'clock, but that that's that, that doesn't really give you the detail because. I'm a details person, <laughs> and um, that's what I need to know. I need to know the. There's, I've got a list of names, and I want to see the crestfallen looks on their faces, each and every one of them. I'm going to tick off the names as they come up off my list. And an exit poll will not give you that. It can't tell you precisely who is going to be disappointed on the night. It can just give you an overall idea. And I think we've got an overall idea now, more or less. I mean, unless all of the pollsters are wrong. And uh, Rishi Sunak is right. There is only one poll that actually matters. And uh, we, you know, we've been uh, fooled before by the inaccuracy of pollsters. So it is possible. And an exit poll doesn't tell you everything. I mean, just look at uh, the, um, the shenanigans about the Brexit uh, exit polls. You could um, ask a certain individual about that. I'm a nutcase. And he'll, uh, he's got a lot to tell you, I'm sure. Whether he will or not is another thing entirely. But, uh, yeah, no, I want, the, uh, I want the details. I want the gruesome details. I can't wait. 
uh, I might wake up early. Uh, I'll probably be, uh, you know, uh, the anticipation will be running through me. So I might have a fitful night's sleep and wake up horribly early with the dawn. But that's okay. Because I, I can have a disco nap in the afternoon before I come into work. Are you dancing? 0345 606 0973. Let's have Westminster. Susie. Susie. Oh, Susie. Too late. Um, Swindon. Hello, John. Uh, hi, Nick. Love to speak to you. A uh, couple of couple points, if I may. Yes. Um, f- first one, you like your show to be educational. And <laughs> somebody earlier said about the night starting to draw in now, which, while is correct, mm. the latest sunset isn't for a week or so yet. And the earliest sunrise is like a week or so earlier. Hang on a minute. Which? How does that work? I, I don't know. I tried to work it out myself. I tried. I tried to think: is it the time the light takes to get from the horizon to here? But that would be a fraction of a second. Yeah. I don't know. I've, I've checked it for the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. But yeah, for some reason, the latest sunset is like a week or ten days later. Earliest sunrise is a week or ten days before. And I think because uh, we have um, a, it's not a perfect circle around the sun. We are, we're a parabola aren't we? And so it gets very, very fast, the, the change of the, uh, uh, of the sunset at certain times of the year, but at this particular time, it's qu- the change is quite slow. So it'll be, it'll be another month or so before we really notice the difference, I reckon. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, it's around the equinoxes that it goes the quickest. But yeah, I, I can't work out why it's uh, sooner or later. But if you've got another listener that knows... Um, I would love to know the answer to that one. Right. So that, that, that's the education out of the way. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I want to talk about the Tory betting, and I think Ranch is on to something. The, the £100 bet is a distraction, because the other stories that have kind of uh, been overshadowed is last week England uh, winning the Euros was put on at 100 to 1. And then suddenly they had a very bad performance. And, yeah, you know, I'm just wondering how many Tories have put bets on that and the £100 <laughs> is a distraction. So... That <laughs> you think Eng- the England team are deliberately playing badly just to win some money for some Conservative gamblers? But, yeah, possibly. I, I, do, I couldn't possibly comment. Well, that is um, a, a better explanation than they pull on the England shirt and suddenly they can't play anymore. Yeah, I'm, I'm just putting two and two together and right. five, but just just a theory. Um, one, one other thing, Jan uh, briefly touched on this one, is uh, Johnson's um, su- uh, um, proposed memoirs coming out has been re- revealed, but all it is is a shadow of him, I'm sure you've seen it, where it says unleashed and then 101024 beneath it. Now, a lot of people are saying that's his memoirs, but I'm wondering if it's uh, a cryptic clue to how many children he's got because he's never admitted it. It's uh, You have to put the numbers together to work out how many he's got. <laughs> how many children has he unleashed? <laughs> <laughs> so, what a horrific thought. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that yeah, it's not 101,000, but there we go. Yeah. But I'd, I'd like to end on a, a warning, if I can, please. Yes, of now, course. Warning, warning. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> So it's uh, careful what we wish for. So up in the Red Wall, um, obviously a lot of uh, Tory MPs uh, are there, like Leander Fall and Gullis, all those ones defected to reform. Yeah. Um, I'm just worried about a lot of unemployed men in the north of England <laughs> suddenly being uh, free because uh, I don't know if you remember the film The Full Monty. <laughs> oh uh, no! Oh oh! <laughs> yeah. Disgusting! Oh, don't even that. Now I'm really yeah. feeling ill. Yeah, I, I won't finish that sentence. All right. <laughs> as, as long as they don't uh, unleash, you know, it, then <laughs> yeah. that'd be okay. Yeah, nobody wants to see that, Lee. Thanks a lot, John. 0345 6060 973. Mike says, if you're looking for cookery tips, poach fish in milk and dill and then make a risotto out of it, just saying, uh, book out soon. Ugh. That sounds horrible. Poached fish in milk risotto. Ugh. Chris says, this latest gambling scandal. Bet you a tenner it turns out to be Meghan Markle's fault. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Meghan Markle. You see what you've done? No! Also, he says, maybe avocado on toast is like John Major. Bland, but what the country needs right now. 
I don't see it. I, it's just not a thing. I, I do not understand why people appear to be obsessed with avocado on toast. To the extent that it's a news item, that it's part of the culture wars, for crying out loud. What a silly country we've become. But also, what a bland dish. I did try it for the first time the, uh, about a week ago. I couldn't believe how boring it was. I'm like, this is it? I don't know why I expected two bland things in combination to somehow, um, you know, work their magic. To be more than the, um, the uh, whatever the phrase is, the, the combination of their parts, the sum of their parts. But they weren't. Add bacon, on the other hand, then you've really got something. But it's the bacon that's doing the heavy lifting. Let's see now. Who's been waiting the longest? Mm. Red Hill. Nigel. Oh, good evening, Nick. Nigel. Oh, it, it, uh, I tell you, this is the, the funniest, funniest session I've heard on the radio for a long time. Thanks, and Nigel. They're all that ad lib and it's spontaneous and like a, a dummy. <laughs> and, and this and that and the sound effects. Oh, it's hilarious. It, it, it's just a bland um, thing. I've got um, some real butter in the in the fridge. I know what you mean. And bacon. I'm just getting around to cooking it. Yeah. Um, I, last time I was working on the um, solar system, I never got the wind turbine to work. But there's, there's another one I'm working on. It's like um, EMF, if you like, uh, magnets and wires. I've got to be a bit careful. So it would be like benevolent light. But I've, I've got to get the meters out and things. So you are know, you telling um, me that you're, you're inventing light? No, yeah, I'm a lord of light. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, I don't even know. I quoted that. It's, it's, uh, well, it doesn't matter. A lady died, right? And um, I had a leaflet in my toolbox. It was a Catholic one. I thought, goodness sake, which prayer do I say? Well, that is a very good question, Nigel, and you certainly are making a lot of sense. I have absolutely no idea. Do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate the effort, Nigel, for, you know, whatever that was. A leaflet, you say? Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Come on, we're running late. We are running late. Uh, Mick Jones from The Clash is Grant Shapp's cousin says this message. Is that true? I didn't fact check that one. You didn't? Shall I do it now? No. Well, well, just assume that it's true. Unless proven otherwise. Mick Jones, out of the clash, is Grant Shapp's cousin. <laughs> I had no idea. Rock and roll! Uh, Lawrence says, that don't impress me much. Shania. Oh, that's a Shania Twain song. That's a good song. And Michael on uh, Alexa says, S-Z-A, how are we saying that? Scissor. Scissor, yeah. Scissor. Scissor is a hippity, hippity, hoppity singer in uh, America. Well, if Scissor is um, as good as uh, Kanye West was at uh, Glastonbury, he should stay, or she, should stay in America. Thanks, but no thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right, let's have um, York. Hello, Claire. Hi. Claire. Hi. Great show, as always. Thanks, Claire. I needed to call up to get some things off my chest that, that you actually touched on. I was glad about the Corbyn business. Oh, it's yes. really it's really frustrated me. You know, there's left-wing journalists in tomorrow's paper, in all the tomorrow's paper, criticising Starmer over Corbyn and saying it will be the undoing of Starmer and... <laughs> Who's uh, saying that? Uh, Andrew Fisher. Who's that? You know, he, he used to be the policy advisor of Corbyn and he now writes for the I paper. Oh, yeah. And um, so, I mean, he Starmer just can't win because then on the right hand, right wing, you've got journalists criticising him for for why he supported Corbyn. And I didn't like Corbyn, but I voted for him because anything was better than a, a corrupt Tory government with Johnson at, at the helm. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, 
that, that assumes that any government with Johnson at the helm would be corrupt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. You, well, may, you may think that, Claire. I could not possibly comment. Right, OK, OK. <laughs> but, I mean, I just think, who cares what Starmer thinks about Corbyn? You know, he's irrelevant to anyone's life. Correct. And But what is relevant to people's lives now, and what these journalists should be asking, is asking Tories why they supported Johnson and Truss. Because they had they did huge damage to to and and, and affected our lives. Yeah. And I can't understand this this constant obsession with journalists asking about what Starmer and Corbyn when he wasn't even a, a pri- never even became prime minister. And yet, you know, Tories are just given a free pass over their choices of, of prime minister. Well, they certainly are in the right wing press because they're on their side. What is bizarre? Um, and is, you know, the typical of the left wing is that even on the, the, the very few outlets that are left wing ish, and that would be The Guardian and The Mirror. They're doing um, hit jobs on, 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 on Starmer at the moment, The yeah, Guardian the, and The Eye Paper. The left wing cannot help themselves but f- have the, this fight about purity and when they uh, wrestle themselves to the ground so that usually the Conservatives step nimbly over their prone form and take the tape. I know, it's just so frustrating. I just wish they'd put more energy into what is the really, really doing damage to the country. Um, you know, it's not... Well, Starmer hasn't even been a Prime Minister yet, so, you know, you can't <laughs> prejudge him, can you? Yeah. You know, you know, judge him on, his, on, on how he is in government, not what you think may happen. Correct, yes. Um, but the other thing, I don't know if you've got, got time, the other thing that's really annoying me is Farage. And I keep hearing people call up saying that he's the man of the people and, <laughs> you know, and he speaks for us. Yeah. Just because he has a pint in the cigarette. That's you know. yeah. That's that's an act. He, he's I think much more comfortable in the surroundings of, for instance, the Savoy with a, a glass of vintage champagne in his hand. That's that's who he he is. Um, he's uh, a trader from the city who went to a public school. Exactly. And um, is uh, and if if his closest friends aren't millionaires, they're billionaires. This idea that he's a man of the people is it's just an act. Just like and, Boris Johnson's uh, routine is an act, and the, and the and the real travesty is is that what he wants is a small state, which means less public services, which all these people supporting him rely upon. You know, he, you know, Nigel Farage can use private health and private schools well, for his children. They, they all can, which is you know why uh, the NHS and the state school system is in such a dire state is because those who are running it don't use it. Here, Claire, I'm going to have to go, but thanks for that. 0345 6060 Tony says, I came to the conclusion that my city, Liverpool, needs independence from the rest of England. The people in this country are mad. They're so annoyed at the Tories, they're thinking of voting for Nigel Farage. These are the same people who sing It's Coming Home 58 years after our only major tournament success. <laughs> that is so... I mean, talk about setting yourself up for failure. It's coming home. It isn't coming home. We learn nothing. We have the same experience, time after time after time, and we pretend that it didn't exist. We know what we're like. It was almost an accident that it came home in the first place. And it probably wouldn't have come home if it hadn't been played here in 1966. Not that I'm an expert at all. I was only six when it happened. I wasn't really paying attention. But if it had happened anywhere else, it probably wouldn't have gone our way. Because it hasn't gone our way since. Not even close. All right, there was that 5-1 win over uh, Germany, which was a famous day, but it, it didn't make any difference because it wasn't in a part of a tournament, was it? It's just also... I mean, it's, it's embarrassing is what it is. It, it, <laughs> and it just encourages other countries to laugh at us. Laughing at us! <laughs> Plymouth, hello, Julie. 
Hello, Nick. I have a solution for the Nigel Farage problem. Yes. Um, his point with the people. Let's send him to the Goose and Cuckoo oh, for good. an evening ah, with... Yes. yes. Well, what do you think? I think that they get on like a house on fire. I think Jeff will soft him out. There's that big hole he's always talking about. It. Chuck him in there. Well, let's not get carried away. Maybe they'll just have a, a cosy chat. <laughs> OK. No, no assassin. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no one's talking about anything like that. No, of course not. They just have a chat over, uh, you know, a beverage. Why not? Booze. Yeah. Thanks, Julie. Got to go. 0345 6060 973. Jorit, Amsterdam. Hey, how are you, Nick? Good, you thanks. Know, one tip, um, speaking of heavy lifting, avocado and salmon. Uh, also, just uh, for, for uh, just tips for things on toast. Mm, um, I don't know. No, why, why would an avocado, taken? hang on, why would an avocado improve the taste of salmon? Oh. Um, well, I was I was simply finding a way to justify the continued existence of avocados. But uh, I think I think we have using, found a way. From your point of view, you're correct. No, we <laughs> we have found a way. Put it on bacon. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Speaking of bacon, yes, Boris Johnson. Yes. Um, <laughs> I bet I bet he does actually smell of bacon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we? A from? little bit whinging and whining and moaning. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I think he may smell of bacon a little bit. And, you know, I don't know how what the answer is to the question I'm about to ask in your very complicated or very imperfect uh, first-past-the-post system. Yeah. But as a former left-wing politician who has seen the left, in country after country, lose election after election for simply not being willing to practice smart politics. Mm -hmm. I do have a sincere beef with Keir Starmer, which is that he's a coward. He's not a leader. When the, the humiliation of Diane Abbott, the, 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 the demonization of Extinction Rebellion, the removal of the whip from Lord Cashman last week, I could go on and on and on. This man is far enough ahead in the polls to start showing a modicum of leadership. And I'm just wondering, like, at what point does smart politics uh, turn into an absolute abdication of, 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 of moral leadership? Well, what... What he's doing at the moment is is leading a campaign. He's he's not leading a government, and that's what you're after. In his world, he wants to do this by stages. Let's win the campaign first, and then we can do the government part later. That would probably be his answer to that. Jurit, uh, thanks for that. Gotta go. For that, 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 gotta go.